for you tonight. A lot of offense here last night, and who to thunk it, right, with the San Diego Padres in town. Milwaukee scoring 10 runs on 15 hits. Seven of those earned runs, and seven of the hits came against San Diego's starter, Wade LeBlanc. It's interesting that the Brewers put up these kind of numbers against the team with the lowest earned run average in the National League. And how good was it? Well, you see how good the San Diego starters have been. Take their last eight games until last night. Their starters had only given up eight earned runs in over 51 innings last night. Seven earned runs against the Padres starter in only three and a third. And it was a nice win for the Brewers as they try to disrupt this pennant race in 2010. All right, stay with us. Bill Schroeder will come back, and we're going to talk about Casey McGee. What a season he's having. It's been a career year. We'll take a look at the National League leaders at RBIs. There's a familiar face in that group. Stay with us. We're back in a moment. Presented by Menards. Save big money on all your home improvement needs at Menards. By Toyota and your Metro Milwaukee Toyota dealers. By Oneida Casino. Get yourself in the game. Play slots, table games, and bingo at Oneida Casino. Fun is our game. And by the new Miller Lite Vortex bottle. Taste greatness. All oh, the parking lots were open early. A lot of tailgating going on tonight and a big crowd expected here and Casey McGee, what a story he's been. You have to start thinking about Casey McGee along the lines of Prince Fielder and Ryan Braun as far as offensive weapons. And to start play today, McGee is second in the league in RBIs. He's tied with Ryan Howard, who was activated off the disabled list. The National League leader is Albert Pujols with 88. Pujols homered last night. McGee with four runs batted in, and he is in pursuit of a franchise record for RBIs in the month of August. Back at Miller Park, uh, Bill Schroeder joins us now. And, Bill, you talk about Casey McGee, and here's a guy coming off the waiver wire. The Brewers picked him up last year. With every home run, it's a new career high, and he's putting together an historic month of August, perhaps. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun to watch him, and the RBIs that Ryan Braun and Prince Fielder leave out there on the bases, Casey McGee, all season long has been the guy. His consistency, consistency has been very good all year. But the month of October, or month of August, has been tremendous. The last 16 games, tremendous line to line. I mean, going from left field line down to the right field line, hitting the ball where it's pitched, and with power as well. He had a stretch of 11 at bats here at Miller Park, where he had 11 straight base hits. So his last 11 base hits and 13 Miller Park at bats, he's been tremendous. 
Well, the 23 RBIs is where he stands. That leads all of baseball. The franchise record is 32. Gorman Thomas and Cecil Cooper. More hitting tonight. We'll see. It's the Brewers and the Padres. It's game two, and it's next. Back at Miller Park, it's the Padres and the Brewers tonight. San Diego with the best record in the National League to start play today. 73 and 48, Bud Black's club, the surprise team in all of baseball this year, and they are right in the picture for a postseason berth. Today, they are five games up on the Giants. Lost the game last night. Toyota lineups for Bud Black. David Eckstein just activated off the DL, had a calf injury. He's back. Miguel Tejada hits second, then Adrian Gonzalez. The middle of the order is Ryan Ludwig, Chase Headley, and Yorby Torrealba. And the bottom three, Chris Norfia, Scott Hairston, and the pitcher, Kevin Correa. And that lineup will face Chris Narvison. And is a scouting report brought to you by Lexus. Yeah, it's been a pretty good month of August for Narvis, and he's only 1-0. Oh. He does have two no decisions in there and a 378 earned run average. This is his first start and appearance against the Padres. Only three hitters have ever faced Narvis and that are in the current lineup tonight, and they're 0 for 10. And he's had a very good changeup, and his curveball has been a good pitch for him in his last three starts. And here is how the Brewers line up defensively, courtesy of Menards, with Braun Kane and Dickerson in the outfield. Dickerson in there for Hart. McGee, Escobar, Weeks, and Fielder around the horn of the battery of Jonathan Lucroy and Chris Narvison. Corey Hart taken out of last night's game with a hamstring injury, and he took batting practice today, and for precautionary reasons, they're going to hold him out. Could be available to pinch hit. First pitch down and in to David Eckstein. Away we go on a Saturday night in Milwaukee. A cloudy night here. Eckstein just back from a stint and a rehab assignment in the minor leagues. Had a calf strain. Injured that calf rounding third base earlier this season. 
So that's a key piece for the Padres to get back in their lineup today. Yeah, certainly a guy that uh, is a tough out. He doesn't walk much. He does put the bat on the baseball, but not a guy that steals a lot of braces. So an interesting choice as a leadoff hitter for Bud Bach. His offense has been much better since some of the trades. Escobar with the first chance. And one away here in the first inning. Well, the Padres made a couple of transactions today. David Eckstein replaces Ryan Webb on the roster. Webb, the uh, bullpen pitcher. We saw him last night. He went two innings last night, so he was shipped out. And Luis Durango is here, a speedy outfielder. Everett Cabrera was sent down to the minor league. So these Padres continue to tweak their roster. They are without Tony Gwynn for the rest of the season. Season ending wrist surgery. Kyle Blanks, their big slugger, had Tommy John elbow surgery, the ligament replacement surgery. He's out for the year as well. And Jerry Hairston is still a bit ill tonight. Another pop up. This time it's Braun. And two outs in the first inning. Well, the offense is not the reason why the Padres are in first place in the National League Western Division. They've got a five game lead right now over the Giants. It's been their pitching, and it's been tremendous all season long. Not just their starting rotation, but their bullpen. Very, very good. And their defense, for that matter. And their offense is getting better. Now, we talked so much about the pitching yesterday, and rightly so. The Padres certainly deserve it with the league's best earned run average. But last night, it was a different story. 10 runs, 15 hits. Brewers put seven on the board against the starter. They added three more against the bullpen. Impressive night offensively for Milwaukee. Every position player in the starting lineup had a hit. Casey McGee had two hits and four runs batted in. And on two occasions, the Brewers were down three runs to the Padres. Came back twice, took the lead for good on Lucroy's home run in the fourth. Never look back to win the first game of the series. Well, the Brewers off to a pretty good start. When you looked at this stretch of games where they're facing some of the league's best pitching, they've done a pretty good job. They've won three in a row now. And everybody contributing offensively. And the Brewers starting pitching has been pretty good. Rough start for Gallardo yesterday, but bullpen was able to get the job done. Breaking ball that uh, just got away from Chris Narvison and to the backstop. Look at that slider that didn't do anything. Well, a hitter's count for Adrian Gonzalez. He homered last night in the first inning. And he gets jammed, but able to squeeze it inside the line. That's going to go down to the wall. Gonzalez into second base with a double. Well, Gonzalez was the final out last night, but also had two hits and a walk in the game last evening. And Chris Narvison has done such a good job throwing strikes in his last three starts. He's only walked three to total in his last three starts, and he has to avoid 3 1 2 0 counts. He got a 3, -0, a 3 1 count on Gonzalez, and although he didn't hit it all that well, he got a pitch right down the middle. 25th double of the year for Gonzalez. Instantly in scoring position with two outs, and here is Ryan Ludwig. And that knocks the glove off Lucroy. Maybe got crossed up. Gonzalez into third base on what will most likely be a pass ball, but Lucroy wants to get it straight with his pitcher. And what was the pass ball? Expecting a breaking pitch, and if you're going to get your glove knocked off, that's the way to do it. Expecting something soft, and you get a fast ball. He was lucky he even got a glove on it. Hit him around the thumb. Those are, those could hurt from time to time to get those jammed thumbs on a pitch like that. Knocked his glove right off. You see, Lucroy was actually ready to to get in a block position, and that fastball came whistling by. Had to be a little panic set in right there at the last moment. Oh yeah, you hate that. I mean, if you call a fastball and you get a breaking ball, that's one thing. I mean, you can make the adjustment there, but if you're expecting a curveball or a slider. And you get a fastball, it's very difficult 
you know, to even get a glove on a pitch like that that's not right down the middle. Sometimes you wear those those right in the mask. Well, Narson being very careful to Ludwig. An instant threat put into the San Diego Padre lineup when they acquired Brian Ludwig from the St. Louis Cardinals, part of a three-way trade, the Indians, the Cardinals, and the Padres. And there's a strike on the corner. And Ryan Ludwig, one of the few Padres that have ever had an at bat against Narvison. He's 0 for 6 coming into tonight. Obviously, those six at bats coming as a member of the Cardinals. Ludwig had an all star season in 08. And now, from one contender to another, San Diego picking up Ludwig and probably the maybe one of the quietest trades as far as big bats that will make. A significant impact in the lineup. You, know, you think about the Cliff Lee deal, Roy Oswald going to Philadelphia. I mean, there were some big trades made, but this one kind of slipped under the radar a little bit. But Ludwig hitting behind Gonzalez and a big threat in this lineup changes this offense a great deal. Full count to Ludwig. Bouncing ball. Escobar will make the play and the side retired. Robinson strands a runner in third. Here come the Brewers in the bottom of the first. In the top of the first. Now we're ready for the home first. Bunch of Little League teams here tonight at Miller Park. Great to have the kids at the ballpark. Toyota lineup for Ken Maka, Ricky Weeks, Alcides Escobar back second tonight with Ryan Braun in the three hole. Prince fielder Casey McGee and Lorenzo Kane in the middle of the order. And Maka has Chris Dickerson, Jonathan Lucroy, and Chris Narvison rounding it out. And Alexis got a report on Kevin Correa. He has been very good lately on the road. He's won three straight starts. His run support incredible. Second best in the National League at six and a half runs a game. So the Padres swing the bats well when he's on the mound. He's got a good sinker and his out pitch is his slider. He's got a good one. He'll turn 30 years of age in three days. Out of Cal Poly is Kevin Correa. Facing Ricky Weeks to start the bottom of the first inning. Weeks, Escobar, and Braun. First three up. Ricky comes in with 23 home runs and 73 RBIs and an on base percentage of 370. Had a hit last night, a double, and an RBI. He had a one for five night last night, did Weeks, and that was. One of the worst nights among the Brewer hitters. That's how good they were offensively against San Diego last night. Had very patient at the plate. They were able to flex their muscles a couple of times. McGee and Lucroy with home runs and hitting the ball where it's been pitched. I mean, they've done a nice job in the last three days. This is game two of a long homestand. The Brewers will 
Welcome in the Dodgers next on Tuesday and then the Pirates come to town. Nine games over ten days in all one of the longest home stands of the season. Brewers start today 13 back of the Reds. While the Padres have a five game lead over the Giants in the National League West. Nice play by Headley going up the ladder and he gets Weeks out number one. And when Cray is on his game, he's going to get a lot of ground balls. Ricky beats that one right in front of home plate. Almost got the hop over the head of Chase Headley, but able to make a nice play and get him. Now with Corey Hart out of the lineup tonight, at least the starting lineup, it's Alcides Escobar who gets the call in the two-hole. A position in the batting order he is most comfortable, he said. It's where he hit in the minor leagues most of the time. Occasionally he hit leadoff, but typically he was a two-hole hitter. And Maka likes him in that spot tonight. He certainly doesn't have the power presence that a Corey Hart has, but he puts the bat on the baseball. He can go to the opposite field and he has a lot of speed and he'll take some pitches there you go right on cue it's down the right field line Escobar on his way to second and Ludwig's throw is late a double just like that and the Brewers put a runner in scoring position with one out they must have hurt you well done you do your homework don't you not a bad pitch from Correa but you know, as we were talking about staying right on the pitch and that was a slider off the corner Pretty good pitch, but Escobar goes right with it. Did try and pull it and dumped it down the right field line with his speed, able to get to second base. You know, everybody likes that number two spot. Everybody would like to bat in front of Ryan Braun. Would rather bat in front of Braun than the pitcher. You're going to get better pitches to hit. Well, especially in a National League lineup, that uh, number two spot in the batting order is always the the spot that. The young hitters especially want to hit struggling hitters in front of the superstars and no different here in Milwaukee. So now Braun with a chance to drive it a run. Yeah the maturing process of Alcides Escobar you see where he makes contact back in the hitting zone back in here didn't try and pull it well done by Escobar and able to get it off the end of the bat and dump it down the line for a double. 13th double of the year. Had two hits last night, did Escobar. And Braun rifles one to center, but that is right at Denorfield. Boy, Braun hit it like a rocket to center field. But it's the second out. They stayed right in on that breaking pitch. And Brawny, watch the hands for Brawny. Just stay back and goes right down and gets it and hits it hard. Got it down a little bit on his handle. When Ryan gets him on the sweet spot like that, they go out of the ballpark. Denorfia back in center field tonight. Second straight start in center in this series. Here's Prince with two away. Escobar at second base. Now Corey just. Battling some tight hamstrings. He had a little tightness in his lower back on the last home stand. They're all connected. And uh, he's just trying to get himself back to 100%. You could tell he had a little hitch in his giddy up last night. He yeah. was not running at full speed. All right, and don't be surprised if he's not in the starting lineup tomorrow. You get him today off, you get him tomorrow, and the team has an off day on Monday. So you give him an extra day. We'll probably be, be ready for that Dodgers series on Tuesday. Fielder driving in a run last night, which was his 62nd RBI of the year. Still among league leaders in home runs with 25. And an impressive on base percentage. Fielder in what you could call a down year for the slugger. Down by his standards. On base 40% of the time. He leads the National League in walks. And an on base percentage of 403. Right at. Oh, it gets by next time. And here comes Escobar. He'll score. 
So the Brewers are on the board one to nothing. And the normally sure handed David Eckstein lets one get away. Yeah, a little bit rusty out there at second base. And as you're, you're right, I mean, normally he eats that ball up easily. A bit of a short hop off the bat of Prince Fielder and not able to handle it. Escobar with good speed able to score with two outs. Let's see how they're going to rule that one. Either a base hit an RBI or an error and no RBI. My guess it's a hit. No official ruling yet. Fielder at first. A run is in. One to nothing. The Brewers lead. And here is McGee. Casey takes a strike. Officially it goes as an E4. Error on X time. No RBI for Fielder. Strike two right on the outside corner. Going to the count on McGee. 81 runs batted in. Only pool holes with more RBIs in the National League to start play today. And we're talking about how good Casey's been in the month of August. Batting with two strikes doesn't seem to bother him too much. A lot of those base hits that he's been able to get this month have been with two strikes. Toriaba knocks it down. By the way, Rock, that's David Eckstein's first error of the season. Padres have been one of the better clubs defensively this year. That tied for second in fielding percentage. Only the Reds have been better. They've got the best fielding percentage in the National League. Who would have thought that? Yeah, how about that? Well, it's no coincidence that the Reds and the Padres are division leaders at this point. The way they pitch and the way they defend. Speaking of the defense, it's Hairston, Scott Hairston in left, and Orfield Ludwig in the outfield. Chase Headley over at third, Miguel Tejada and David Eckstein at the Keystone with Adrian Gonzalez at first. Tori Alba catches Menard's. Padres defense. Next time, just back today, activated from the disabled list. Now McGee drove in four last night, but he actually had a chance at much more than that. He was up with the bases loaded in his third at bat, came up empty, stranded a pair of runners in the sixth, but it Still was another big night for McGee. Shoots out to right, and that's a base hit. So Casey McGee, just like Rock said, using the opposite field, keeps the inning alive here, and it's first and second with two away. And doesn't seem to mind hitting with two strikes. I mean, just just a good approach by Casey McGee. There's that slider again. This time it's up in the zone. Remember Escobar's double. It was on the corner and down. That went up and out of the reach of Eckstein, who really never has had very good range. But ordinarily, if he can get to it, he makes the play. It was his error that kept the inning going. Now two on with two out, and Lorenzo Kane at the plate. What a start Kane is off to in his major league career. A 375 batting average. That's 15 hits in 40 at bats. To start his career, he's driven in four runs, has a few stolen bases as well. He's played great defensively in the outfield. And another guy that lately it all started in Colorado, driving the ball to right center. A number of his first, what, five or six hits, he, he was pulling in the left field. And you wonder. Is he going to be able to make the adjustment? But he certainly has been able to do that. He's hit the ball hard in the right center a number of times. Well, Kane crossed over a big hurdle on Wednesday in St. Louis. It was really the first time Kane had faced a a premier opponent as far as pitching goes. Ken Maka rolled him out there against Adam Wainwright. Wanted to see what Kane would do, and if uh, Kane is going to be in the picture the rest of the year, Maka wanted to see what he would do against the opponent's ace. What did he deliver? A couple of hits, two extra base hits. He scored two of the three runs for the Brewers. 
And Milwaukee won on Wednesday in St. Louis, beating Wainwright for the first time at home this year. Wainwright was 11 and 0 prior to that game Wednesday. So one good game answering a manager's challenge and likely to see a lot of playing time the rest of the year. This time he strikes out. The inning is over, but the Brewers score a run on an error. And it's one to nothing as we head to the second. WMLW is presented by Menards. Save big money on all your home improvement needs at Menards. And by American Furniture, Electronics, and Appliances. Bring it home. A lot of sports fans in other cities that claim to uh, understand the art of tailgating, but none like Wisconsinites. And the parking lots were packed before tonight's game. What a great sight. Always a great sight here at Miller Park. Chase Headley leading off for San Diego. And that one's going to end up in the second row. Now they try, but uh, they really don't really come close to uh, you know, the atmosphere in the parking lot here in Miller Park. Just a big cloud of smoke when you when you drive in. Sometimes it leads to a disaster, actually. You know, tailgating. Remember in New York? I don't know if you were here yet, but uh, a New Yorker tailgating put his grill with the coals <laughs> under his That's car. Right. So I remember that. And they had, uh, you were here, right? Yeah, yeah. And the fire trucks out there. Right. Now that would never happen. No. <laughs> Too experienced. That's right. It's, it takes a little experience and a little thought. Hit hard. Escobar bobbles. He'll take a chance at it and no chance to get Headley. He knocked it down, had to come up with it clean. Could not. And yeah, that'll be a base hit. That was earlier today. Look at the folks out. And they've got the tents going. The big buses were out today as well. Tailgating going on. Little beanbag toss. Some of the uh, tailgates are so sophisticated that they bring the satellite televisions out as well. Now, that's, right. that's yeah. an upper level tailgating. Now, how are you at the beanbag game? I know you're pretty, pretty proficient in most of the parlor games that uh, we see around here. But how about, uh, how about beanbag? Well, I'm thinking about turning pro, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Talked to my agent about it, and we think it's the right time. You have your own bean bags, right? That's, yeah, absolutely. Of course, come in a little uh, pouch, little carrier. Just two to a bag, though. Mm -hmm. You don't want to, you want to mix them up too much. We invite you to come back and do it again tomorrow. Day game tomorrow. So a little breakfast tailgate. That's always fun. Summer is winding down. That's hard to believe. Kids are back in school at the beginning of September for the most part across Wisconsin. 
That days are shortening up pretty quickly. Fly ball to center. And Lorenzo Cain. Calls it in for out number one. Hey, follow the Brewers on your iPhone, iPod Touch, Blackberry, and Android phone with MLB.com at bat 2010. That features play by play video highlights and live audio broadcasts. Visit Brewers.com today for more details. We have had a scoring change. Prince Fielder's error has been changed to a base hit and an RBI. Could have gone either way if you like keeping the scorebook at home. Yeah. So uh, David Eckstein is still not committed an error this season. Well, Prince is happy. David Eckstein's happy. The only one that's not happy is Kevin Correa. It now becomes a uh, an earned run. Mm -hmm. But it is, after all, the uh, year of the pitcher. So, hey. After a couple of decades for the hitter. Pitchers finally get a break, except on this night. Kristen Orphia, runner takes off. Lucroy's throw is on the money, but the hand is in there. A little short hop from Lucroy, and somehow Headley snuck a hand by Ricky Weeks, a stolen base. Well, he had a huge jump, and Jonathan did a nice job to make it close. He'd rather have the ball short hop than be too high. Second baseman really doesn't have much of a chance with a short stop. If it's high, you can't get the glove down, but a short hop, you have a chance. And Luke Croy trying to be very quick. The ball beat him, but just not able to get the tag there in time. Now the high tag did him in. That's the 16th steal for Chase Headley. This Padres team likes to run a lot. And if only the Mets have stolen more bases. McGee makes a play, and that keeps Headley at second base. Second out of the inning. San Diego has three players with at least 16 steals. They're without one of those players now for the rest of the year. Tony Gwynn Jr. who had 17 stolen bases. Their club leader for Bud Black is Will Venable who has 23. Yeah, the Mets lead the National League in stolen bases with 110. Padres now with 104. That's a lot of stolen bases. Keeps him out of a lot of double play opportunities. So now two outs and a runner at second. Scott Hairston at the plate. The brother of Jerry. His brother has been ill the last couple of days and not available for it, Bud Black in the starting lineup. The Hairston brothers, they played together. For Team Mexico in the World Baseball Classic a couple of seasons ago. They liked it so much they reunited in San Diego. And they did a lot of damage against the Brewers in that series in San Diego early in the year. With Scott Harrison with a big home run. Scott Harrison still headless on this current road trip. He's 0 for 9. And basically hitless in the month of August so far. Tonight he gets a start in left field. He and his brother play a lot of different positions. You mostly see Scott Hairston in the outfield, left, center, or right. Jerry Hairston can give you. Defense at the infield positions as well and the outfield. He is a super utility man. Yeah, every team has to have one or two guys like that, you know, especially with the, the number of pitchers that are on rosters these days. Anywhere between 12 and 13 pitchers. So every manager has to have a couple of guys he can go to to play the infield and the outfield. Two outs, runner at second, and Hairston. Pops it high in the air. That might stay playable. Fielder with room makes a catch. And it over. A leadoff single goes for naught. We head to the home second.
some of the sights and sounds from last night's game and both starters struggled last night here Wade LeBlanc and Giovanni Gallardo combining to give up 13 earned runs and 13 hits on what was a night for the pitcher in Major League Baseball everywhere else it seemed look at the performances last night by starting pitchers Felix Hernandez with eight shutout against the Yankees Brian Dunsing, eight innings, just one earned run. C.J. Wilson, one of his best games of his career, a 12-strikeout performance over eight and two-thirds against Baltimore. Halliday combined with Lidge as they shut out the Nationals. Galarraga, Sanchez, Homer Bailey. Homer Bailey did it in Los Angeles. Some terrific pitching performances from starting pitchers last night, just not here in Milwaukee. As Dickerson drops a butt down, and he's safe. Chris Dickerson on the first pitch lays one down, an infield bunt single for Dickerson. No, that's the idea. You get you get that ball down on the ground, you get it by the pitcher, and then it's a foot race. I mean, the second baseman has to come in quickly. Sometimes a little bit of indecision between the second baseman and first baseman as to who's going to get it. Once it gets by the pitcher, pretty good chance it's going to be a base hit with Dickerson's speed. A good start to the second inning. I, I love the bunt for a base hit. When you have a guy that can run like that, why not drop it down once in a while? That's smart baseball to lead off an inning. Yeah, Dickerson with great speed. He actually looked like he put a little, little English on that baseball. He stuck the nine iron in the infield grass. <laughs> yeah, but uh, how about Roy Halladay? Now a 2.16 earned run average. That's good for third in the National League. Adam Wainwright with his. Outing against the Brewers over two now at 2.06. And Tim Hudson continues to pitch well. Hudson a chance at the comeback player of the year and the Cy Young Award perhaps. A lot of baseball to be played but Hudson is second in the league at ERA. The San Diego Padres ace Matt Latos he will not pitch in this series. But he's fifth in the league in earned run average. Yeah, Roy Halladay with eight complete games. You talk about a guy that uh, you know your bullpen can pretty much you know sit back and relax, at least for seven innings, maybe eight. Has there been a pitcher in baseball more consistent than Roy Halladay? He just brings it every day. You know what he does even when he doesn't win and that hasn't occurred too often. Dickerson takes off a swing and a miss from Luke Roy. Dickerson is in there. Stolen base and the running Brewers pick up a bag here tonight. Well, stolen base number 60 for Milwaukee. Chris Dickerson get a, got a great jump. Toriyama throws well. A little bit on the left field side of the bag. That's what allowed Dickerson to steal it. And he looks in to see where the baseball is and able to get in safely. And you know, it's a small thing, but the feet first slide. We see it from Dickerson and Lorenzo Kane, Alcides Escobar. You can buy a lot of bases with a good feet first slide. And you let you less have to hurt yourself. You know, jam a wrist or jam a finger. And an infielder trying to make a tag is a, a little less willing to stick that glove in there when spikes are coming in. Yeah. Kind of a lost art, isn't it? Well, you, you, you hit for a slide, you have you know a lot of things exposed. All your fingers, you know, you might get a tag right in the nose. Well, you, you just less have to get hurt on the slide when you go feet first. And you're right, the intimidation factor, you get to clean up a little bit, not not on purpose, but just the way it is. Yeah, which would you rather tag, a hand or a spike? Right. Well, they say you're never supposed to go head first in the home plate because the catcher has shin guards and all the protection. I don't see the difference going into second or third base. Right. We see a lot of infielders, they drop the knee down, they try to prevent you from getting to the back. That never happens with a feet first slide. <laughs> Headley makes a nice play and he gets Lucroy for the out. So Lucroy unable to advance Dickerson to third. And now the pitcher Narvison coming up, who has been a weapon at the plate this year for Ken Maka. Kevin Cray once again, a little slider that stayed up in the strike zone, and Chase Headley looking Dickerson back and still able to get his man at first base.
So here's Narvison with six RBIs this year and a pitcher that's hitting 333. And it's no fluke. Narvison with 12 hits in 36 at bats this season. His RBIs in his last two games. Yeah, at first glance, you see the batting average of 333, and he's a pitcher, and you go, oh, he's probably one for three, <laughs> maybe two for six. Well, Narvison with 12 hits, leading the best hitting pitching staff in the National League. And Chris Capuano got into the act last night. That base hit the left. Capuano was impressive last night. Not only did he have the hit, but he went four scoreless, actually three and two thirds. Picked up the win. It was his first win at Miller Park since May 7th of 07. A long drought for Capuano here in his home ballpark. He's had a nice run. Nice run of appearances and probably his best of the season last night. Certainly will not pitch tonight, but he's back in the bullpen. Many wondering if Capuano will get a chance at the starting rotation. Narvison takes strike two. Now well, by now opposing pitchers know Narvison swings the bat well, so there's no secrets anymore at this point. Center to Norfia on the run. Dickerson's going to tag, and here comes the throw from De Norfia. Dickerson is in there. Well, if Narvison flies out, two outs with a runner at third. Now I'm back to the top of the order, and more on Chris Capuano. Last night he settled this game down. It was a lot of offense on the board until Capuano came on in the fourth inning. Yeah, he came in with the bases loaded and one out. He got a strikeout and he ground out and. Faced the minimum through 11 batters. I mean, you couldn't ask for much more out of Capuano, and uh, it certainly allowed the Brewers to get back and ended up winning the ball game. So uh, Capi with his first win at home in a few years. Good to see for Capuano. Nobody works harder than Capi. Faced 11 batters. He threw only 40 pitches. Had a walk, but he wiped it out with a double play. So he faced the minimum. Ricky Weeks in the air. Shallow right coming in is Ludwig. Eckstein calls and makes a catch. Side retired. Brewers let an opportunity go by. We head to the third. But um, you know, I'm starting to hit those at times now again. So um, you know, I, I do I do feel like the long toss and, and things that I've been working on um, here on the side have have uh, 
you know, started to translate into a little more arm strength. So that, that's been one of my goals, and, uh, and it's been good. The thoughts of Chris Capuato after last night's game. He's been an 18 game winner, an all star. And what kind of things go through the Brewers' management minds concerning Capuano, whether he starts, stays in the bullpen after his second surgery? Yeah, I mean, you got to be careful. I, I doubt that he's going to get too many starts. He may get one from time to time here, the, the rest of the way. Still wants to. I think the organization is still looking at Manny Park, Chris Narvison, as as guys that they can look to in the future. And uh, you got to be careful with that arm. You don't want to tax it too much. The Brewers have been very careful using Capuano too much. Only once has he pitched in back to back days. Ryan Braun makes a catch in fair territory. Correa is retired. We want to remind you that tonight after the game, stay tuned to MLW for our Milwaukee Brewers postgame show. The final out. The final out tonight, following the final out, right here on WMLW. Narvison with one away in the third. And to the top of the order, David Eckstein. Chris Narvison has already overcome one hurdle this year. His nemesis hitting the first and the sixth. Sometimes his struggles in the first have not allowed him to get to the sixth. And then the third time through the batting order sometimes has been a problem. That's the biggest inning for any pitcher. You know, especially a young pitcher, you got to make some adjustments, especially with a team that's never seen you before. Usually that will benefit the pitcher, at least early on, but hitters make adjustments quickly. Eckstein popped up to short his last time up to lead off the game. Tejada will be next. And another pop up. Casey McGee in foul territory. Two outs. Well, we're watching the scoreboard tonight. Good matchup in St. Louis this evening. They are scoreless in the third. It's Lincecum against Carpenter. San Francisco beat the Cardinals again last night. Brewers took two games from St. Louis. The Redbirds have now lost five straight. Remember, they swept the Cincinnati Reds that dust up between Brandon Phillips and Yadier Molina. St. Louis went in there. They swept all three games. And they lost two out of three of the Cubs, got swept by the Brewers, and they've lost the opener of their series against the Giants. Yeah, so the bottom line, don't get any, in any altercations with the Cardinals and wake him up. Brandon Phillips uh, kind of woke up a sleeping giant. <laughs> and after that, the Reds have caught fire. Cincinnati has won seven straight. They have the longest winning streak in all of baseball. And the Reds have a four and a half game lead over the Cardinals in the National League Central. Boy, hard to believe the Cubs are 22 games under 500. And what's left of the Cubs? I mean, they have traded away a lot of guys. Derek Lee over to the Atlanta Braves. Fontenot to the Giants. Yeah. Terrio, Lilly. Ted, Ted Lilly gone. They won today, though. Beat Atlanta today. Well, you see what the Reds have been able to do. Scoring a lot of runs. They're getting great pitching. The Cardinals 0 and 5. And a team ERA up over 4, which is the biggest surprise there. Tejada draws the walk. And the Cincinnati Reds have the fewest errors in all of baseball. Remember the start that the Twins got off to? Right. I mean, minuscule air numbers. They've actually gone over Cincinnati. Minnesota has 49 airs. The Cincinnati Reds with 48. Now the Reds have gold glovers all around their infield. Phillips and Scott Rowland. Orlando Cabrera's won a gold glove. Joey Votto might win a gold glove one day. Adrian Gonzalez never want to see Gonzalez at the plate with a base runner and that two out walk to Tejada gives Gonzalez a chance. He sliced one down the left field line for a double. 
His first time up. Off the end of the bat, Weeks gobbles it up, and that's the inning. Good job for Narvison. Now you'll see Braun and Fielder hit when we come back. The Brewers have a one to nothing lead on our way to the bottom of the third inning. Brewers and Craig Council, one of the hometown favorites. 40th birthday today for Craig Council. And the Brewers, of course, celebrating their 40th anniversary as a franchise. Council not in the starting lineup, but when Craig Council does uh, play for the next time, whether he hits or comes in defensively, it'll be his 1500th game. Bit of a milestone. What a great career he's had, huh? It's amazing. Two World Series rings. Yeah, good to see Wisconsin's own Craig Council. Might see Council get the start tomorrow. It's short. That has been the pattern of Ken Maka typically. Part of me keeps expecting to show up at the ballpark and hear that Craig Council has been traded after the news came down last week that he cleared waivers. Normally that kind of news is not public, but in Council's case it was. That's a shocker. That's still stunning to me that no contender would pluck him off the waiver wire. Maybe the asking price is too high. And rightly so. The rosters will be expanded to up to 40 players beginning September 1st. So you'll get a good chance to see some of those players who are making a name for themselves in the minor leagues. No word yet on who the Brewers will call up. Carlos Gomez is here by the way. He's not going to be a September call up. He's here still on the DL. They're not going to make a roster move until Monday. Doug Melvin told us last night. Escobar draws the walk. Hey, summer is heating up, so make sure you cool off with the seats in the Kalahari splash zone. Every time a Brewers player hits a home run, Bernie Brewer will go down his slide and create a splash. For tickets, call 414-902-4000 or visit Brewers.com. It has been a hot summer. One of the warmest summers we've had in a while. Easy to get loose. I'm not complaining. No, I never complain about the heat. After what you endure in the wintertime. Right. I love the heat. Braun in the left field. A base hit. Just out of the reach of Chase Headley. Ryan Braun. A line out and now a base hit. He swung the bat well twice. Brewers have something cooking here in the third. Two on with nobody out. Right, Fields are coming up. Yeah, just continue to put good at bats together. 
you know, in this series. A pitch up and in, not even a strike, but Ryan Braun, he feels his own. You know, he can cover both in and out, didn't even have to be a strike, and he proved it that time. Got it down the trademark a little bit. One to nothing, Milwaukee. Fielder with a chance to add to it. Brewers have had some base runners tonight. That is their sixth base runner in this game as we play in the third inning. Devin Gray only throwing about 89, 90 miles an hour. I remember him throwing a lot harder than that. Well, even last year and early in the year against the Brewers. He made a start against the Brewers in San Diego. His uh, velocity down and considerably. It seemed like he was throwing about 92, 93. He's been a good find for the Padres. Giants gave up on him. San Francisco had him in their organization and just uh, was not in their plans. They tried to. Sent him down to the minor leagues. He was out of options. And the Padres picked him up. That was prior to the 09 season. At the end of 08, leading up to 09. He was in San Diego all of last year. And one of their best pitchers last year. And this year he has already won double digits. He's 10 and 7. And the RA of 4.63 to start play today. Fielder had the RBI against him in the first. It was originally posted on the scoreboard as an error and then changed to a hit and an RBI. Another big guy out there in the mound for San Diego. They probably have the biggest pitching staff in baseball. 6 3, 200 for Correa. And still not 30 years old. Seems like he's been around forever. He'll be 30 on the 24th of August in three days. That slider almost got a piece of print. Full count, two on, nobody out. Fielder draws the walk. He leads the National League in that category. And the bases are going to be loaded for Casey McGee. Uh, good patience by the big fella. Uh, really doing a nice job swinging at strikes lately. Even with the two strikes, there was a stress. And I think it was about the time that Casey McGee was having a tough time at the plate. You know, Prince was a little bit over aggressive with two strikes and not drawing his walks, but because Casey's been so hot and driving in runs, Prince feels as though, okay, I'll leave it up to him if they're not going to throw me strikes. Well, we went to Dale Swain and we asked him about Casey McGee and we asked him about the transition. Here's what he had to say. He got a little more relaxed and take a little uh, pressure off his legs and his knee when he was so squatty and and he, he started standing up a little bit more, and I think it uh, took a lot of pressure off his legs and, and uh, gave him the, uh, the ability to hit, you know, hit the breaking ball a lot easier. You know, and in my mind, I think the fact that when he, when he stood up a little bit more and not squatted down as much, he's been able to drive the ball to the opposite field a lot better. I mean, his leverage has been much better now than it was in the middle part of the year. Takes a little pressure off those knees as well. McGee said he went to that stance that low stance in the minor leagues. He had a big year in triple A two years ago and he basically went up there and he he said you know what Albert Pujols is the best hitter in the game. I'm going to stand up there like him. And this is actually a little more upright than what he has been the last couple of years. That's off the end of the bat. Denorfi is coming in. He makes a catch. Here comes Escobar. Denorfi is thrown to the plate. Escobar is in there. Oh, look where that ball was when Denorfia threw it. I mean, I'm amazed that Escobar even tried it. Well, not much of an arm in that outfield in center field. Not many guys are going to be able to score on that fly ball. And Casey McGee owes Alcides Escobar a uh, steak dinner. And you see the more upright approach. 
the breaking ball off the end of the bat. And check out this throw. Not much on it whatsoever. And Escobar just they would have beat it a couple of hops. And I'll tell you, he wasn't that deep in the center field. I was surprised they sent him. Speed to burn from Escobar. He takes a shot at it. And it pays off. It's two to nothing, Brewers. First and second with one out. And here's Lorenzo Cain. Casey uh, didn't hit it all that well. Watch the Northia come in. I get a little bit deeper than I thought it was, but still in all. I mean, Escobar beats that one easily. On the corner, strike one. That's a familiar spot for McGee after an at bat. He always goes to his hitting coach. And it was Dale Swain before Casey McGee ever. Appeared in a regular season game for the Brewers prior to the 09 season. He said, if this guy gets 500 at bats, he'll hit 25 homers. And he's right on it. He also said he'd drive it 100 runs, and he's got a chance to do that this year. McGee with 20 home runs, 82 RBIs. Well, Dale's been in the game a long time, and he's a very good judge of talent. You can see things that uh, you know, a lot of us can't see, and he knows a lot about hitting. That goes without saying. Well, he certainly stuck his neck out for Casey McGee. This was in the spring training of 09 when McGee wasn't certain that he was even going to make the ball club. The only reason he made the team that year, last year, is because he he could catch. He was actually the emergency catcher. So you didn't waste. An extra position right. player. I remember Mike Rivera was the backup, and Ken Mocker was saying, Well, I'd like to get Rivera some pinch hitting opportunities. Yeah, so the eight home runs that McGee hit in spring training had nothing to do with it, huh? <laughs> you heard Doug Melvin say yesterday, don't judge right. a season by spring training numbers. But you're right. I mean, the fact that he's versatile. He never did catch for the Brewers. Right. Matter of fact, he's now become an anchor at third base and in the middle of that lineup. Took him about six weeks to get regular playing time last year, but once he got it, he took off. Kane in the left field. That's a base hit. Braun will hold up. Fisher was sending Ryan Braun. The ball gets away from Headley. Hey, what's Ryan doing? Why is Ryan Braun turning around and looking at the left fielder? I have no idea what that was. Fisher was waving him home all the way. Braun shut it down before the bag. He just stopped right on top of the bag. He kind of creeped off the ba off third base and almost got tagged out. Right, another good at bat by Lorenzo Kane on that breaking ball down. Right about there, Brad Fisher's waving him around. Not much of an arm by Hairston. And check out Ryan. He's got a third base coach, not even using him. That's just bad base running right there. Boy, if Headley hangs on to that baseball, Braun's out. As you saw, Scott Hairston, not much of a throwing arm in left. And a frustrated manager in that dugout. Bases loaded, one out. Here is Dickerson. It was almost as if Ryan had conceded he was going to stay at third base when that ball got into left field. He stopped right here. Now Ryan Ryan runs well. I mean, he's one of the fastest base runners from Milwaukee. If he just keeps going, he runs hard. He's going to score. Because Harrison doesn't throw that well from the outfield. Bases are loaded. Dickerson a chance to drive in some runs. Dickerson does not have an RBI this season. Started the year with the Cincinnati Reds. Dickerson came to the Brewers in the Jim Edmonds trade. Played 27 games for the Reds. And now it is slicing foul. This is Dickerson's eighth game as a Brewer. He missed most of the season with a wrist injury, that surgery on that wrist.
Ball and two strikes. Broke his bat. Here comes Braun. Headley will go to first. And the out is recorded. Looked like Torrey Alba wanted the throw to the plate. He had the force play. That would have been close. Ryan had a pretty good break off of third base. A little bit of a walking lead. And if he throws it right away, he might have a chance at it. But Toriyaba upset. Uh, but Headley took the shore out at first. Be an RBI for Dickerson on the ground out. Well, and Toriyaba could have been upset that the Brewers were able to get a run on a broken bat grounder. Probably a little bit of both. So with the base open at first, they'll walk Luke Croy to face Narvison. And if you've been watching the Brewers this year, you know that's kind of playing right into the, to the Brewers' hands. Hit the ball well his last time up, did uh, Chris Narvison. Deep fly into left center. But you have to do it. You always walk a position player to get to a pitcher. Even with Narvison's gaudy numbers at the plate. First time that Jonathan's been walked intentionally. And knowing the kind of competitor that Narvison is, he probably takes insult at that intentional walk. Now we'll see if he can cash in here. Three to nothing, Milwaukee. Bases loaded once again. Narvison, the eighth batter of the inning. A strike on Narvison. Try to keep his streak alive with driving in runs. I agree. Noticeably keeping a baseball up on him. Didn't want to leave one down. That's where Narvison likes it. He's got that slight uppercut. And Korea trying to elevate the fastball around the belt. Two and one to count. Saw so Mujica loosening in the bullpen. Narvison could deliver the knockout punch to Kevin Correa here in the third inning. He's thrown a lot of pitches. This is his 71st pitch already. And it's three balls and a strike. Well, what a spot for Narvison to be in right now. A lot of pitches in this third inning. It's getting into the danger zone for a manager. An action pitch coming, maybe. Right down the middle, Narvison content to take it. Full count. Runners take off. Narvison fouls one away. A little bit out in front of that 90 mile an hour fastball. So Narvison jacked up out there. He just has a good look up at the plate. Keeps that front shoulder closed. Making Korea work. Pitch number seven coming up to the Brewer pitcher. None of the outs have been easy for Korea in this inning. Narvison strikes out. Might have chased ball four. So the Brewers strand the bases loaded, but they score twice. Bring eight batters to the plate, and it's three to nothing, Milwaukee.
will lead off in this fourth inning. And Ludwig acquired via trade going from St. Louis to San Diego. Take your pitch by pitch his last time up. And it's all a matter of who is behind you in the batting order. Remember now he's got Chase Headley behind him in the batting order. And in that situation, on a 3-2 count with runners on base, Chris Norrison gives him the curveball. Now, I, I wonder if he's with the Cardinals and he's batting in front of Albert Pujols does he get that curveball with men on base? I think that the uh, opposition is more apt to challenge Ludwig than to risk walking him and have to face Albert Pujols. So that's an adjustment that Ludwig's going to have to make as the season goes on. Yep, hitting behind the star hitter as opposed to in front of the star hitter. Ludwig primarily has been in that cleanup spot as a member of the Padres. I had a conversation earlier this year with Tony La Russa, and he talked about Brian Ludwig and how well he hits the fastball. And he said he's one of the best fastball hitters in the game. And the point is, batting second or batting in front of a star hitter like Adrian Gonzalez, you're going to see a lot of fastballs when you get right down to the count, to your point. Not so much when you bat behind him. <laughs> right. I mean, there's a big difference between Chase Headley hitting behind you and Albert Pujols and no disrespect to Chase Headley but you know nobody is an Albert Pujols I mean, hitting in front of Albert is probably the best spot in any lineup in baseball. Well the Padres certainly have their lineup mapped out and it's a more prototypical lineup. I think Ken Maka kind of falls in line with Tony La Russa's thinking as far as a two hole hitter. You know, usually the stereotypical Second place hitter in a batting order is a guy who can go the other way. He's a speed guy, a contact hitter. But Larusa and Maka, they like power in the two hole. They like somebody who presents a threat prior to the team's best slugger, which yeah. usually hits third. Ken Maka loves that uh, power threat to start a game, first inning. You never know, he might get a home run out of Weeks or Corey Hart. Ludwig sends one to center field. Well, that's what he can do. He hits. Pitches all over the place. A bad ball hitter, and he comes up with a single on one right out of the dirt here in the fourth. Yeah, that was a good pitch by Chris Harvison. Not much you can do about that other than tip your hat. Didn't get him the fastball. He was ahead in the count with Narvison one and two. Curveball that looked like Jonathan won to block, and uh, you know, Ludwig able to get the barrel of the bat on it. <laughs> that ball is what, six inches off the ground? Maybe less. That's Vladimir Guerrero territory, right? right. Well, Narvison has given up a base runner in every inning, but just one base runner in each of the first three innings. Chase Headley, an infield single in the second. Headley came up as a big prospect. Third baseman in the Padres organization. And uh, once he arrived in the big leagues, remember they had Kevin Kuzman off playing third base. They moved him out to left because they wanted his bat in the lineup. Yeah, he could hit. And he's turned into a good third baseman. He could off to a rough start defensively, but he uh, iron things out nicely. The left field experiment didn't go so well for Chase Headley. He said earlier today he's glad to be back where he's most comfortable at the hot corner. Unlike Ryan Braun, who uh, has enjoyed the transition to the outfield. Much safer out there in left field than at third base. I think every organization when they get when they get young hitters, prospect hitters like Braun, like Headley, you're always concerned about their defense bringing down their offense. With Braun, he committed 26 errors and he won rookie of the year. It didn't affect his offense at all. A little different story with Chase Headley. He was a little more affected by his play defensively as a left fielder. Now he seems to have settled in. He's having his best season of his career. Yeah, they say don't take your offense into the field, but some players have more of a tough time taking their defense to the plate. And yeah, especially when you're learning a new position, but that never seemed to bother Braun either. Ron's one of those guys who makes an error. He says, well, I'll just drive two in. And he means it. And most of the time he did it. As a walk. 
So a shaky start for Narvison in the fourth a hit and a walk and now two on for the Padres with nobody out and, and be careful first pitch fastball to this guy. He likes to ambush the fastball. We've seen him swing early in the game or early in the count last night. Tori Alba with two on. Robinson started him with a changeup. Robinson has given up three hits and now two walks. Could use a ground ball here. The Brewers would love to turn a double play. Torrey always grounded into nine double plays this year. Uh, seems to have lost that release point after that Ludwig base hit on the ball in the dirt. Can't find a strike zone. It's amazing how being out of rhythm just a bit can throw everything off. Big pitch coming up for Narvison. Two on, nobody out. The 3 1, and it's low, ball four. The bases are loaded, nobody out in the fourth inning. The third walk by Chris Narvison already in the fourth inning, and he had only walked a combined three batters in his previous three starts. So his command has been very good. Well, two walks here in this inning, and nobody out. Three walks and has not struck out a batter yet. So bullpen activity. Mike McClendon gets loose. And Rick Peterson is on his way to the mound. He can come back for Narvison as fast as it left. But you're hoping that he minimizes the damage. Subway trivia tonight. How many times has Trevor Hoffman led the National League in saves? The former Padre. We'll give you a hint. The times he's led the National League in saves were as a San Diego Padre. <laughs> Trevor's two away from number 600. His brother Glenn, third base coach. He's proud of his younger brother. And he's just hoping that he doesn't get to 600 while his Padres are here. But would not admit it. Well, there is major trouble brewing here for Narvison. He has lost command on the mound. He's got Denorfia at the plate. The bases are loaded. A hit and two walks. Ball two. Well, he's in the part of the batting order where he could completely get out of this thing with minimal damage. But he's got to be able to throw the ball over the plate. Padres aren't going to help him out. McClendon is loosening in a hurry. Peterson checking on him. And a swing and a line drive to left. Braun can't get it. That goes off the wall. 
And two runs are going to score for San Diego. Denorfia swinging away on a 2 0 pitch. Lines one into left center. And it's a brand new ball game. It's 3 to 2. Milwaukee. Yep, right down the middle of the plate on a 2 0 count. I mean, you'd be, you're patient at the plate to get into counts like this with men on base. And splits home plate right in the half. And Ryan got close, but just couldn't get it. With decent speed on the bases. Toriyama ends up at third base. Well, and that's going to do it for Narvison. Boy, how fast it goes. Narvison, three shutout innings. Just rolling along here. And he's going to be lifted in the fourth. Still nobody out. The first four batters have reached, and Maka makes the change. We'll take a break. We'll set up the new pitcher when we come back. Batters reach two hits and two walks after cruising along through the first three innings. He's out of the game and it's turned over to Mike McClendon, who made his major league debut for the Brewers last Saturday in Colorado. And did a heck of a job. A three up, three down, perfect three innings. A couple of strikeouts, did not allow a base runner. A sinker slider pitcher. Two levels of the minor leagues for the Brewers Triple A and Double A. Good numbers in both levels. At double A Huntsville, McClendon was one and one, an ERA of under one, 0.61 earned run average in seven games. And in Nashville in triple A, at an ERA of 244, covering 25 games. He actually made three starts down there. So he's the kind of guy that can give Ken Maka some length. And the thing you like about McClendon down in triple A, 14 walks, 44 strikeouts. And he only allowed one home run. So he has good sync, keeps the ball on the ground. So runners at second and third. The tying run is at third base. Go ahead, run at second. And nobody out as McClendon tries to navigate his way through this inning. This is the key hitter here. If McClendon can retire Scott Hairston, he'll have the pitcher coming up next, and there's a way to the finish line without giving up any runs. And there's no activity in that Padres bullpen, so you figure Korea is going to get up there and get in that bat. Boy, it can it can go fast in this game, huh? Yes, it can. Chris Narvison is is batting in the bottom of the third with the bases loaded and a chance to knock out the Padres starter. He strikes out and he comes out in the fourth inning and cannot record an out. It is lifted from the game. And just couldn't find the plate after he threw a pretty good pitch to Ryan Ludwig who 
took one off the ground and got a base hit. After that, and things didn't go so well. Two balls and a strike. Two and two to count. Hairston popped up in foul territory in the second inning. That ended the inning with a runner in scoring position at second base. One good play back there from the rookie catcher. Yeah, every one of the sliders from McClendon has ended up way off the plate. So I guess if you're Scott Harrison, you got to figure a fastball is coming here. And McClendon not overpowering by any stretch. 88 to 89 with the fastball. Got to keep it down. Full count. And it's way inside, almost hit him. Boy, what an inning here. Third walk of the inning. McClendon walks Hairston. Now the base is loaded, and the pitcher Correa is coming up. Still nobody out. McClendon making his Miller Park debut here tonight. Is 25 years of age. Played his college ball in Florida at Seminole Community College. And a base hit by the pitcher. Toriyama will score. They'll hold the runner at third. An RBI single by Kevin Correa. This game is all tied at three. And the bases are still loaded with nobody out. Only the sixth hit of the year for Kevin Korea in 41 at bats. That was a fastball that was up in the zone, not much on it. And Correa lines it right back through the middle. And now the Brewers are in big trouble. Now the top of the order coming up with the bases loaded. Three runs are in. The first six batters of this inning have reached base. Three hits and three walks. And a strike to Eckstein. On the ground, chance for two here. McGee to the plate. Lucroy to first, not in time. Eckstein beat it out. Right, Jonathan did a nice job clearing himself from home plate because Denorfia came in hot. Looking to take his legs out from on. You got to be careful in a play like that if you're catching. And if a runner gets you just right, I mean, that throw is going all the way down the right field corner. You got to get your foot on the plate. Really take a big crow hop away from home plate so that the runner can't get you and kick your legs out from under you. Check it out. Look at the north. You come after him. Well, if he gets a piece of that leg, that ball might end up all the way down the corner. As long as you can touch home plate, you're in good shape. The north, you're way on the infield side of the of the plate. One gone. And here is Tejada. Two hops. Casey McGee took his time to get rid of it. Watch the Norfia come after him. Trying to get those legs. Well, now double play. The Brewers can get out of the inning, but the dangerous Tejada at the plate. Tejada picked up from the Baltimore Orioles this year via trade. Padres were very busy approaching the trade deadline. And 
Cooper is still active. Got 10 days to make a deal and uh, have a player join your roster that is playoff eligible. Ground ball, broken bat. McGee coming to the plate again. They get another out at home plate. Now two outs, but Adrian Gonzalez is coming up. A good job by McClendon getting in on Tejada's hands and check out Jonathan getting out of there and jumped and jumped right on top of that broken bat. Survival of the fittest at home plate in this inning. <laughs> get it and get out of there. Well, McClendon's got his work cut out for him here. Adrian Gonzalez doubled in the first inning and then he grounded out his last time up. One of the most feared hitters in the National League, Adrian Gonzalez. And a strike. Outside corner, it's 0 2 on Gonzalez. Another off speed pitch, well located away from Gonzalez. Has never seen McClendon taking a couple and uh, apparently can't figure him out. But it doesn't take long for a guy like Gonzalez. Good numbers away from Petco Park. He's down 0 2. McClendon deals. All in two strikes. McClendon can't be an easy guy to pick up as a hitter. You've heard about a funky left hander. He is a funky right hander. More like a shot put motion. Yeah, whatever it takes to disrupt the rhythm, the timing of the hitter. One, two, Gonzalez swings and misses. How about that? McClendon comes on and strikes out Adrian Gonzalez with the bases loaded. Tie game, 3-3. Three, three. First RBI for the crew in the first inning. An infield hit that scored Escobar. Then McGee driving in a run with a sack fly. Escobar's great speed allowing him to score. The Brewers got another run on an out in that third inning. Chris Dickerson, his first RBI of the season. But the Padres come right back. They get three runs in the fourth. A two RBI double by Gnorfia. The pitcher Correa drives in the third run to tie it. But Mike McClendon. Goes through Eckstein, Tejada, and Gonzalez with the bases loaded and nobody out. Striking out Gonzalez to end the inning. Heck of a job. I mean, it could have been a whole lot worse in that inning. 
closes the book on Chris Narvison three plus innings four hits and three earned runs. You know three run leads aren't uh, very safe in this series. Padres lost two different three run leads last night and the Brewers have lost one tonight. We're back at square one here all tied at three. Turned out to be a beautiful night for baseball in Milwaukee after some cloud cover. A few rain showers in the area. We'll see if the Brewers can come back. They had Correa on the ropes in the third inning. The Brewers brought eight batters to the plate in the third, scoring twice. And a sellout crowd. It looks to be at Miller Park tonight. Good night for sports on television in Wisconsin. Is that right? Got the group crew tonight. Pack starts at nine o'clock, right? I have not brushed up on my Packers uh, preseason schedule. It's tonight, huh? I wondered why Brian Mikulajic wasn't working tonight's game. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> well, it could be perfect timing then, right? Mm -hmm. They'll ask if he went, and no, he didn't, says Tom Howie in the crew chief. Well, Ricky having a tough time laying off that high fastball tonight, and looked like he got a break. Got him. Weeks a foul tip into the mitt of Tori Alba and a strikeout. Well, our subway trivia tonight concerning Trevor Hoffman. How many times has Trevor led the National League in saves? And he did it twice. Almost won a Cy Young Award in 1998. 598 career saves. It's interesting that of Trevor's 598 saves, 552. Or all but 46 have come as a Padre. 44 saves as a Brewer. And that third team, that's the that's the good water cooler question. When you name the other team Trevor Hoffman has a save for. Me? Can I name well, it? That's just kind of a rhetorical question. Oh, you, you, it's you the know. Florida Marlins. <laughs> Rock. Did you know that? Of course, of course I did. did. Well, he's two away from 600. Started his career in Florida, traded to the Padres his first season. He was on the original Marlins club. As a matter of fact. 16 seasons in San Diego, and now a second as a Brewer. Escobar in the right, right at Ludwig for the second out. We take you way back, 1993. There's Trevor Hoffman. Just up in the big leagues for the first time, but his first career save. Benito Santiago behind home plate. Good call. That was a good call right there. 1993. Does anybody but me look to see who was catching? Everybody else had their eyes focused on Trevor, right? You and Rick Ramirez, I think. <laughs> well, what's interesting about Hoffman, he he uh, took Heath Bell under his wing. Keith Bell is the current Padres closer, and he was Trevor's setup man. And it was uh, the success of Heath Bell that kind of ended Trevor's tenure in San Diego, and the reason why he ended up in Milwaukee. Heath Bell led the league last year in saves with 42, and he's leading the league this year in saves with 37. So Heath Bell is trying to do in two seasons as the closer. What Trevor Hoffman did in 16 seasons, and that's lead the league twice. Mm -hmm. Brian Wilson with the San Francisco Giants with 35. He's second. Cordero with the Reds, 33. And Billy Wagner having a big year with the Atlanta Braves. Yeah, we, 30. We talked about Tim Hudson earlier in the broadcast, and two pitchers coming off Tommy John surgery, missing most of last year. Hudson and Billy Wagner. 
and they both come back and let's face it two of the main reasons the Braves are at the top of the division. Here's the one two to Braun. Big bouncer to Tejada. Still has a great arm and he guns down Braun and that's a three up three down inning. First of the night for Correa. The Dodgers visit the Brewers Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Tickets are going fast, but they are, are available. Call 414 902 4000 or go to the Brewers website at Brewers.com. Looks like we might see Manny Ramirez in the Dodgers lineup when they come to town next week. The Dodgers and the Pirates will be here. And it's a nine game, 10 day homestand and all. This is game two of the homestand as Ryan Ludwig sends one out to Escobar. One pitch, one out for Mike McClendon. And if you said who? He is the new Brewers pitcher. He's making his major league debut at Miller Park tonight. He made his major league debut last week in Colorado. This is only his second game in the big leagues. And what a job he did getting out of a mess in the fourth. You don't get much opportunity to mix it up with the guys in the bullpen, do you? I mean, you know, you, you, you go through, and uh, the bullpen is on kind of a uh, an interesting schedule. Trevor Hoffman has these guys working early on. I went up and finally introduced myself to McClendon. It's been a while. He's been with the team. I'm kind of embarrassed. I went up to him and said, you know, Bill Schroeder, do TV. Nice to meet you, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Zach Braddock was sitting right next to him and said, no, 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 he's our TV guy. That's Bill, Bill Schroeder. Jim. So, uh, yeah. Hi, Jim. Brian Anderson along with Jim Schroeder. How you doing, Brett? <laughs> so, he, he must have had something else on his mind. Well, I mean, you know, you know. He's, he's first time in the big league clubhouse in Milwaukee. I'm certainly not a showstopper, that's for sure. That is for sure. All right, Jim, what do you have on this one? Yeah, you can uh, join Foley and Lardner in striking out hunger in Milwaukee. Support Foley and Lardner's Cans for a Cause benefiting Hunger Task Force by bringing canned goods to the August 22nd Brewers game at Miller Park. That's actually tomorrow, August 22nd, mm -hmm. Sunday at Miller Park. Bring uh, canned goods to the ballpark. Good job, Jim. <laughs> Tori Alba at the plate for San Diego. I look at it this way. That's what I get for not introducing myself earlier to him. He's been here a week. Problem is you're you're Jim. That makes me Jim's partner. <laughs> <laughs> That's about how it goes. What's that guy's name? That's uh, Bill's partner. Uh, Jim's partner. That's Bill's guy. Which is a good thing. 
the star of the show Jim Schrader. <laughs> I sat next to a guy on the plane the other day and he asked me about you. He said, uh, the guy, Bill, your partner. Yeah, Bill Shore. Yeah. Did he play? I said, yeah, you know, he played for the Brewers. He goes, that's funny. I've been following a team since the early 80s. I don't remember him. Yeah. I get that a lot. Are you sure you played for the Brewers? I think so. Let's put it this way I think your buddy sitting next to you didn't follow the team all that close. The casual fan. Casual. They certainly knew Robin Young. To the casual fan, they might not have known me. Well, he unless they unless unless they sat up by the bullpen. Bouncing ball. The runner was on the move. Headley, and that is out number two. So just a quick reminder here as a public service announcement: this font in is Bill Schroeder, Jim, Jim and Jim's, Jim's partner. partner. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy. And you have a Mike McClendon kind of mustache too. I'm surprised he didn't know that. Yeah. Bad hair day. You do got a little uh, a little, little humidity going on. A little heat miser working there, yeah. don't you? Not good. Just keep your hands away from his mouth. A little light on the gel today. <laughs> ah, we're over the air. There we are. Bill Schroeder, ladies and gentlemen. You did play for the Brewers, right? I believe I did. I was in uniform. Tremendous slouch. I thought it was a nice story. That was a nice story. It got us through two outs of the fifth inning. <laughs> now it's all business. Chris Denorfia is at the plate with a runner at second and a strike from McClendon. But you would acknowledge it's kind of tough to run into the guys in the bullpen, particularly here at home. Right. They have a specific routine. They're not readily available to the media. You being in the media at all. Right. There's a strike, and it's one and two. They're way out there. I guess we could always walk out there at some point, but it's kind of far. Zanorfia delivered a key hit for the Padres in the fourth. Drove in two runs with a double and knocked Chris Narvison from the game. Full count. Money saying about Mike McClendon. Money was his manager in Triple A Nashville. He's a tough competitor. He throws strikes with three pitches. Fearless on the mound. He's ready for any spot. And he proved it against Adrian Gonzalez. He was facing one of the league's best hitters with the bases loaded. And he came right after him. He struck him out. Yeah. Yeah. A couple of breaking balls to get ahead. And then he got him with the sinking fastball right on the outside corner. Had a tough time at the bottom of the order, but uh, the first three in the batting order, no problem for McClendon. Shattered his bat, another foul ball. And the fastball just boring in on the hands of these right handed hitters that went up in the zone and got that one just above the knuckles and breaks his back. Full count, two outs to Denorfia. 
And the runner at second is Headley with good speed. And the pitch is on the inside corner. McClendon rings up to Norfia. A couple of big strikeouts with men on here tonight. Welcome to Milwaukee, Mike McClendon. Hey, there's Jerry Augustine. See, he's a fan. He's catching a game, having some fun, feeding the children. That way, Augie. Got the grandkids with him. Yeah. So, you know, I used to do that here uh, for the Brewers. Honey. Now, you would never expect Augie to be a grandfather. Doesn't seem old enough, does he? Or does he? You're looking at me like I'm nuts. Well, this, these images we're looking at here changes my mind about it all. He looks like a good grandfather, too. Oh, yeah. Look at him. Prince Fielder leads off here in the bottom of the fifth in a tie game. All tied at three. Fielder with an infield hit and an RBI in the first inning, and then he walked his last time up. The Brewers had Correa on the ropes. They were ready to deliver a knockout punch, but he got through it. In that third inning, did you ever expect Correa to be able to settle down and be the pitcher that's still out there? I mean, the way Narvison started the ball game, he looked pretty good. Narvison, three shutout innings to start, and then could not get an out in the fourth. Michael Clendon has come on. He's been a story so far. He settled it down, much like Capuano did last night. Padres did score three runs in the fourth. But that was it, even with the bases loaded and nobody out. And three runs in. McClendon got out of a mess. And now Fielder has worked the count full. Him. So Prince is aboard for the third time. Boy, he looks nice and relaxed up at the plate, doesn't he? The last couple of weeks, boy, just, just sitting back nice and calm, letting the ball get to him and just off the outside corner and gets his second ball. Say this fall, WMLW is your home for college football with weekly Saturday Gridiron Classics from the SEC and the MAC conferences. Season kicks off Saturday, September 4th at 11 with Louisiana Lafayette. That's where Jonathan Lucroy went to college. Visiting the Georgia Bulldogs this fall. Get your college football on WMLW. Louisiana Lafayette. 
The raging Cajuns. Going between the hedges. Right. That can't be fun for them. At least after a quarter. Tough place to win. Ooh. Joe Thatcher, a former Brewer farmhand, getting loose for the Padres. Yeah, the only left hander down there in the bullpen for Bud Black. Kind of an interesting time to bring him up or to get him loose. Casey McGee tied for the major league lead in RBIs in the month of August, has 23 ribbies this month. Tied with Joe Kubel of the Minnesota Twins. Wow, that caught a piece of Tori Alba. And another base hit. Casey McGee is going to be hitting 290. He was down in the 270 range there for a while, was Casey. And that was a bell ringer that time on Tori Alba. Check it out. Boom, right between the eyes. Knocks him back. There's a little bit of a help from Ed Rapuano. Human sausage races. All dressed up, nowhere to go. Two balls and a strike on McGee. As an RBI tonight, a sack fly and a single in the first. And that one is through. A base hit. Casey McGee continues to swing a hot bat. First and second, nobody out in the fifth. Oh, Casey McGee's last 15 at bats in Miller Park. He has got uh, 13 base hits. Thank you very much. A uh, fastball that they tried to get in on his hands missed out over the plate. Well, you see what McGee's done. The first 39, he was red hot. He was up there among league leaders in home runs and RBIs, and then he tailed off in the next 35. That's when he made the change at the plate. A little more upright. And in his last 43 games, a 309 batting average, 31 RBIs. And hitting over 400 in his last 17 games. That's a significant stretch where he's hitting 409. First and second for Lorenzo Kane. Another one catches a piece of Tori Alba. So it's been a rough inning for the Padre backstop. Boy, have an inning, huh? He's kind of grazed his helmet. And knocked him back a little bit. Bud Black wants to make sure his catcher's all right. You got to be careful with the concussion situations these days. I think the first one did the damage more so than the second one. You know, it's just kind of a lasting. You saw Ed Rapuano, the home plate umpire, call the trainers out immediately. So there's obviously been a little conversation since that first foul ball he took off the mask. Well, it's not the first one he's had all year either. I mean, catchers have to go through that day after day. You know, sometimes you go through a stretch of about 10 games and not get anything. But remember last night he got one right off the right shoulder. Tonight, two off the mask. This was last night with Ricky Weeks up right off the shoulder. Got a good chunk of his shoulder, too. Man, tell me that doesn't hurt. And then he's taken two off the mask here in this inning. No balls and a strike on Kane. Two on, nobody out in a tie game. Kane to the right side. Gonzalez, the lefty, goes to second for one. The turn, no turn. Tejada wisely holds the baseball. And it's first and third for Milwaukee. Gonzalez makes it look easy over there at first. Yes, he does. Left handed throwing first baseman has a much easier time making that throw to second base. Smooth as silk for Gonzalez. Gets rid of it quickly, but Kane runs too well. Well, you got a lefty coming up in Chris Dickerson. Here comes Bud Black. 
Corey Hart. He's back there with a bat in his hands. Not in the starting lineup with a strained hamstring. Bud Black's going to make a change here. So Correa is out. A lot of base runners and a lot of pitches here tonight. Brewers with a golden opportunity. First and third and one away. We'll take a break. Tonight here at Miller Park, coming later. I got, he's got a scratching problem, I guess. Exactly. Right? <laughs> Look at him <laughs> getting text messages. Dude, you're on TV. You had to know you were going to get on TV with that get up. And he uh, wonders why he can't get a date. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Sitting next to that guy. All right. <laughs> The new pitcher is Joe Thatcher. All right, great numbers for Joe Thatcher. 36 strikeouts in 26 in the third innings. You see the 43 appearances. That means he's not in there very long. A couple left handers, and that's about it. They do have a right hander out in that bullpen behind Thatcher. Here's Dickerson now. Runners at first and third. Brewers trying to take the lead, break the tie. Fielder at third base. He led the inning off with a walk. And Kane over at first, reach on a fielder's choice. Dickerson driving in his first run of the year back in the third inning. Cameron Lowe gets loose for the Brewers. Brewers have the pitcher spot coming up two spots away at this point. So it's possible that position in the batting order could come up. Well, you have to get a guy loose just in case. I don't remember Joe Thatcher throwing from this arm angle when he was with the Brewers. He was more over the top. He's kind of slinging that ball from three quarters, making it very difficult, difficult angle for that left handed batter. Thatcher in the big leagues for the first time in 07. It was after the trade. It was uh, part of the Brewers minor league system that year. Dickerson into center field. And should be deep enough. Fielder tags. The throw comes to second base. And Chris Dickerson has given the Brewers the lead. Oh, that's a nice at bat. I mean, that's a tough. Assignment for a left handed batter, particularly one that doesn't play every day. Thatcher, a nasty arm angle. He stayed right in there and got that ball deep and up into center field. That's a good job. High fives all around. Well done, Chris Dickerson. That was not an easy at bat. Well, the angle with that ball is coming out on the corner, but able to stay back long enough and hit it deep enough to score Prince. So Dickerson with RBIs in his last two plate appearances, his first two RBIs of the season. 
And the Brewers have a lead four to three. Two outs in the inning. Kane over at first, and it's Lucroy at the plate. Thatcher was traded from the Brewers to the Padres near the trade deadline of 07. That was the deal that brought Scott Linebrink to Milwaukee. Thatcher and two other minor league players. There goes Kane. Throw from the knees. Kane in there. Got a great jump and a stolen base for Lorenzo Kane. And talk about making it look easy. I mean, Lorenzo Kane stealing bases. He does make it look easy. Eddie Cedar, the first base coach, very good at picking up something in those pitchers that gives away whether they're going to home plate. Apparently, given the idea to Kane, and he could have gotten in there standing up. Not many better than Ed Cedar at that. Watching those pitchers and picking up something that can tip off their delivery to home plate. That is Kane's third stolen base. He's three for four. He stole 26 bases in the minor leagues this season. And he has been known to try to swipe third base as well. Lucroy with a chance to add to it. In the right field, falling fast. That's down for a hit. Here comes Kane. And the throw is late. Kane scores. Lucroy with an RBI. It's 5 to 3, Milwaukee. The Brewers playing some little ball here tonight. I mean, good at bats with runners in scoring position tonight. Their third base hit in those situations, and two of them have been run producing base hits. A little slice job down the right field line, got in on him a bit, but Lorenzo came with a ground ball to get on first, steal second, and Jonathan, the number eight hitter, with first base open, they elect a pitch to him, and because of that, McClendon's going to get in that bat. Took the gamble, and Lucroy made him pay. Boy, it is a bonus when you get an RBI from the eighth place hitter in the National League lineup, especially yeah. with two outs. And especially with first base open when you have the ability to pitch around him. McClendon is retired. The inning is over, but a good inning for the Brewers. Two runs are in. Milwaukee with the lead now. Usingers, usingers in baseball. It's just not summer without them. And by the new Miller Lite Vortex bottle. Taste greatness. Hey, Tuesday's a big day here at Miller Park. The Brewers will unveil a statue of Major League Baseball Commissioner and former Brewers owner Bud Selig at Miller Park. The ceremony begins at 1.30 p.m. near the home plate gate outside of Miller Park. 
Public's invited to attend, and the event is free of charge to all attendees. Brewers Hall of Famer Bob Euchre will see the ceremony, which promises to be a great tribute to one of the baseball's greatest leaders. The commissioner's likeness will join statues of Hall of Famers Henry Aaron and Robin Yow in the area outside of Miller Park. Join us as we honor Commissioner Seelig, who brought baseball back to Milwaukee in 69 and continues his tireless work in growing the great game of baseball throughout the world. And only sitting on this 40th anniversary season, season that the Brewers unveil the statue. Looking forward to that Tuesday. Having some fun here at Miller Park tonight. It's a great crowd on a beautiful night for baseball in the Midwest. Saturday night. And it's 5-3 Milwaukee. The Brewers taking the lead in the fifth inning. Got two runs on two hits. Lucroy delivering an RBI with two outs in the fifth inning. The second run. He and Dickerson with the RBIs. Still surprised that San Diego chose to pitch to Jonathan Lucroy with two outs and a base open at first. Yeah. I mean, you pay for, you know, you, sometimes you, you take a risk and and maybe a bit greedy. You know, you, you have a pitcher on deck. The Brewers might have gone to a pinch hitter. But the only right-handed bat on the Brewer lineup, Corey Hart, he's kind of questionable here tonight with that hamstring. Scott Hairston leads off for San Diego. Mike McClendon has come on and done a terrific job so far. As Hairston sends one deep to left. Broad. Yeah, he's out! And he's got it! What a play! Oh, my goodness! Ryan Broad! Best of the year. Well, that one gets two circles in my book. That might be the best defensive play in the outfield. We've seen we've seen some nice ones. We saw Gomez make some good plays out there, Jim Edmonds, but this one just as good. Taking away extra bases from Scott Hairston, fully stretched out and able to keep it in the glove. Well done, Ryan Braun. Good defensive play and left. And a beautiful slide to a finish. Kept his hands up, kept his elbows off the ground. That's a key on that dive. And another look at how much ground he covers here. Wow, what a play. Angles back nicely and times his leap perfectly. Wow. Will Venable is pinch hitting for Thatcher with one out here in the sixth. And the crowd still buzzing about that play from Braun. It just shows you the athleticism of Ryan Braun. I mean, uh, came very close to that double off the bat of Denorfi a couple of innings ago that scored two runs. I mean, he covers so much ground, and he continues to get better jumps on the baseball every year he's out there. Lorenzo Cain makes a play. Two gone in the inning. Now, remember Braun making a catch like that in St. Louis last year. Full throttle and full extension to bring that one in. And as much as he loves to hit, and there's no doubt he's a hitter first, <laughs> he loves making plays like that. Yeah. We'll be talking about that one for a few weeks or months. You know, guys like Ryan Braun, I mean, I mean, they're used to hitting home runs, they're used to getting the big hits, but, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're most proud of plays like that. The defensive plays that guys like Ryan Braun, Jim Edmonds have made in their careers, and nobody wants to be considered a one-dimensional player. And when you make plays like that, you got to start talking about, hey, that Ryan Braun can play some left field. Guys like to hear that. Braun has some of his family here tonight. His dad Joe is here. Some cousins. Always good to see Joe. Pops will be proud about that one. You can tell his mother Diane as well. Mm -hmm. Down there by the dugout after batting practice, Ryan draws a crowd. <laughs> yes, he does. Talking to mom and dad, about 100 people shoving baseballs in his face. And just trying to have a conversation with his folks. The price of fame. The 3 2 to X time. That's normally a safe area with a right-handed batter at the plate. 
Not necessarily with X time at the plate. Well, can McClendon get through this sixth? Three, two all the way. X time fouls another one away. Is that Braddock getting loose in that bullpen just in case Adrian Gonzalez gets in that bat in this inning? That was Braddock who struck out Gonzalez to end the game last night. And a 10 6 win. Eckstein draws the walk. The third walk issued by McClendon. One at each inning he's pitched. He entered this game with the bases loaded in the fourth inning. Gave up a walk and a hit to allow the third run to score, but then he retired the next three hitters in order, including Gonzalez. A scoreless fifth and two outs here in the sixth. And is the pitcher of record for the win at this point. Tejada has been on the board twice, a walk and a fielder's choice. He's 0 for 2 at the plate. And he chases one. Lucroy hangs on to the foul tip. And that's an out. And the inning is over. So McClendon gets a strikeout and a defensive gem from Braun. What a play that was for the first time of the inning. Heiser Automotive Group. Heiser Automotive, where anything's possible. Visit Heiser.com. And by Felco Windows, Siding, and Doors. For quality windows, siding, and doors, call 866-4-FELCO. And our Miller Lite What's on Tap. The Brewers and the Padres tomorrow. They wrap up this series. We're back on Fox Sports Wisconsin tomorrow. 12.30 is airtime for Brewers Live. And then Monday is an off day. Tuesday starts the Dodgers series. And expecting Manny Ramirez to be in the lineup when the Dodgers come to town Tuesday. Three game series beginning Tuesday against Los Angeles. The homestand continues in our Miller Lite. What's on tap? Number of changes here for San Diego. On the mound, it's Ernesto Frieri. Takes over for Joe Thatcher, the third pitcher used by Bud Black. Now just got called up hasn't been up that long but it looks like his numbers are pretty good 21 strikeouts in 13 innings of work he's only walked four and allowed only one home run had 12 straight scoreless appearances dating back to last year 
Ricky Weeks will lead off five to three. The Brewers lead the Padres. As we play in the bottom of the sixth. Will Venable stays in to play left field in for Hairston. And Nick Hundley is the new catcher. So Tori Alba is out. Ricky is 0 for 3 tonight. The Brewers have eight hits in this game, five runs on eight hits. And Ricky pops it up. One away. Next Saturday, your Brewers take on the Pirates here on WMLW. And you can tune in at 6 o'clock for the first pitch. After the game, stay for our post-game show called The Final Out. Brewers Pirates next Saturday, 6 p.m. Central here on WMLW. Here's Alcides Escobar now. Escobar, one of the many players expected to attend tomorrow's event in Racine. Marcus Handel's event, the Coos for Kids Celebrity Auction. Brian Braun will be there. Trevor Hoffman. We want to wish Marcus all the best. Coos for Kids, still tickets available. It starts tomorrow at 4.30. Obviously, the players will be there after the game. It's at the Racine Festival Hall. You can go to coosforkids.com there at the bottom of the screen for more information. And uh, tickets on sale at some of the area restaurants and plenty of availability. The players are accessible. They set up an autograph booth. There's also going to be a dunk tank. And I hear Dave Bush is going to sit on the dunk tank. Really? You, can, you have a chance to plunge the brewer pitcher into the water, according to Marcus. You're going to sit on that? I'm not. I'm out. I'm not on the. I'm not on the dunk tank. No. Have you ever been on a dunk tank? Oh, all the time. I'm thinking about going pro, actually. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have been on the dunk tank. You know, the uh, some of these uh, church festivals around Milwaukee. Oh, is that right? And not so, recently, but you know, yeah. 15, 20 years ago, I'd uh, you know, I'd get a, in there and raise some money. It's a heavy-duty seat. Yeah. I mean, put the extra bolts in there for the big strokes. Yeah. Did you go down? Absolutely. Right, a boy. number of times. That is a foul ball. You just missed. But uh, you know the uh, the amazing thing about when I was in that dunk tank, the number of balls that actually came right at me. <laughs> <laughs> You're supposed to go after the little disc on the side to right. put you in. They were throwing right. them at me. Well, it is the most attractive target. I didn't quite know how to take that. Hit the big round thing. No, no, not his head. Right. On a hop to Headley. Escobar is out. But it's a lot of fun. You should try it. All right, I'll give that a shot. That breaking ball by Frieri. He got called up on July 16th. One of the moves when... Remember Matt Latos and Mike Adams are on the disabled list. Friere is one of the pitchers from the minor leagues that get called up. And he's pitched so well he stays. Yep. Ryan Braun with two away. After that great catch in the top of the center. He's had a good night tonight. It shows only one for three on his card, but Braun did a scorching line drive for an out in the first. He singled and scored in the third inning. Grounded out his last time up. Braun was on base four times yesterday. Two hits and two walks. Drove in a run as well.
I saw a stat that you might be interested in on free area since you're a former player. Mm -hmm. You know the whiff rate? Yeah. How many times he swing and miss on his fastball? He uh, is the third highest rate of swing and miss. That one's hit well. Deep left field. And Fennigal watches it go. Ryan Braun with a home run. Number 17 on Braun. He didn't miss that fastball. And the Brewers add to their lead. It is now 6-3 Milwaukee. Well, it's been a while for Ryan Braun, but he was able to center on that fastball. And so much for the whiff rate. Now the whiff rate just went up or down, whatever we want to call it, 93 miles an hour. And Ryan able to pull the hands in and knock it out of here. That's a line drive bullet by Ryan. That's his first home run in a while. I know he hasn't hit one since August. Yeah, Braun, his first home run since July 24th against the Washington Nationals. That was here at Miller Park. So nearly a month. LeBron with number 17 of the year. His second hit tonight. And Fielder sends one deep to right. That is hooking foul. Gave it a ride but got out ahead of it. LeBron continues to climb an impressive list. Home runs in his first four seasons. He has 120. And he's just two away from breaking into the top 10 right now all time Orlando Cepeda with 122 is next on the list. Well there are some great names on that list huh. Not many on that list had been or will be in the Hall of Fame. Albert Pujols with another 30 home run season. Gives him uh, 10 consecutive seasons with 30 or more home runs. And while Braun is not going to get to the 30 home run mark, you wouldn't think, unless he just got incredibly hot with the home run swing. Still putting together good numbers. Uh, at least in the last two and a half, three weeks, he's back to the old Ryan Braun that we saw in April and May. There's a point in time where Ryan wasn't covering that outside corner very well, but he is now covering both sides of the plate very well. I'm not sure Braun would admit it. Well, I know he wouldn't, but he was hit by a pitch earlier in the season in early May. Remember, Tommy Hansen drilled him in the elbow. And while he missed a couple of days and he didn't go on the disabled list, but you could just tell, especially with the outside pitch, the pitch that Braun normally drives to the opposite field. Might have had an effect on him. Fielder strikes out. He's barking at Ed Rapuano. And the inning is over as Frieri strikes out Prince, but not before Braun sends one out of here. 6 3 Milwaukee.
Now for the game reset, brought to you by Everdry Waterproofing. And the big story tonight, Mike McClendon and his Miller Park debut coming in and settling this game down. Chris Narvison taken out after three innings. Chris Dickerson has two RBIs tonight, both on outs. A ground out in the sack fly. Jonathan Lucroy delivered a run in the fifth inning to give the Brewers the lead. And then Vaughn added to it. Vaughn's 17th home run. He made a great catch as well in the sixth inning. Uh, there Braddock. is Zach Braddock. Yeah, Braddock finished the ball game last night. And, and when you look at the first out of the bullpen for the Brewers tonight, very similar to last night, huh? And Chris Capuano coming in to pitch and bringing things back to normal, and Mike McClendon doing the same tonight. So the Brewers' long men in this series have been very good. McClendon goes three scoreless settings with just one hit, gives up three walks. Three strikeouts as well for McClendon. Continues a trend for the Brewers' bullpen lately. They've been terrific. And a lot of pitchers who were not with the team at the beginning of the season. Guys like Axford and Braddock, Cameron Lowe, Capuano. Two guys in the bullpen right now that started the season out there. That's Todd Coffey and Trevor Hoffman. That's not many at all. Trevor's getting loose, or at least starting to unravel a little bit as we play in the seventh inning. Braddock against Gonzalez. He struck him out last night to end the game. Gonzalez struck out in a big spot in the fourth. McClendon punched him out. With the bases loaded in the fourth inning. McClendon came in with the bases loaded and nobody out. Gave up a hit that scored the run to tie it. As Braddock goes up the ladder, another strikeout. Well, last night, Braddock was part of the bullpen that went five and two thirds of scoreless baseball. It was. Capuano for three and two thirds. Todd Coffey and Zach Braddock finished the deal. And the three of them only allowed one base hit. Doesn't get much better than that. Capuano with three and two thirds, four strikeouts, only one walk. And Zach Braddock after a very long at bat to Adrian Gonzalez. You know, if uh, Gonzalez gets on base, Trevor Hoffman comes in. Would have been a save situation. Ken Maka would not say who he would use in a closer's role, Axford or Hoffman. Last night, Hoffman was up. If the game had gotten into a safe situation, as you mentioned. So much talk about the San Diego Padres pitching, and rightly so. National League leaders in ERA. And while the Brewers starters have not fared well in this series, the Brewers bullpen has been outstanding, not just in this series, but over a significant stretch of games here. In the last 10 games, the Brewers bullpen has posted an earned run average of 136. Just five earned runs in 33 innings. And have outpitched some of the league's best pitching in the last four games, at least up until this point. Outpitched the Cardinals and so far have outpitched the Padres. Two and two to Ludwig. This is a great matchup right here. A power pitcher and a power hitter who loves the fastball. Yeah, get it up around the belt, and it's tough for any hitter to get to. Low fastballs, Ludwig loves them. In the air, Escobar wants it. Two outs. And Braddock able to get in on his hands that time, couldn't get the barrel of the bat out. 
Good fastball in on the hands. Braddock throwing about 93 to 94 right now. Now two gone, and it's Chase Headley. He's a switch hitter. Headley homered last night from the left side of the plate. Hit a two run homer off Gallardo in the first. Much better hitter from the left side than he is the right, at least statistically. Hitting 279 overall, his batting average as a right handed batter is in the low 200s. Been on base all three times tonight. Now beginning the series last weekend, the Padres had a two and a half game lead over the Giants. They played the Giants last weekend in San Francisco and they they took two out of three in that series. They arrived here in Milwaukee with a six game lead over the Giants. That's how much ground they put between themselves and the Giants in just a week. Giants won last night in St. Louis. Brewers beat the Padres last night, so that leads down to five to start play today. And San Francisco trailing tonight. The Cardinals have a 5 1 lead. That game's in the bottom of the eighth inning. I don't think the uh, Giants are going to go away because of their pitching as well. They're pitching in their defense very good, just like the San Diego Padres. They have a number of games to play amongst each other down the stretch. Gonna be a lot of good races to finish up the season this year. Ball and two strikes on Headley. Got him. Fastball right by him. Headley is gone. Braddock impressive in the seventh. Two strikeouts in a three up, three down inning. Stretch time at Miller Park, 6 3 Brewers. Bottom of the seventh inning. Dancing in the seats here tonight. Well, you see what Milwaukee did to start the year. That's what put them in the big hole. The 21 and 30 beginning, nine under. Since June 1st, the Brewers playing over 500, as a matter of fact. And while the runs are down a half a run, the pitching has been much better. And there have been a lot of positive signs coming out of that bullpen from some young pitchers. Mike McClendon. 
the next one in the spotlight here tonight. He went three scoreless innings. Braddock continues to impress. John Axford, Cameron Lowe, all pitchers that will be in the mix next season. Here's Casey McGee. You know, Zach Braddock and his stuff with that fastball and that nasty slide. It's all a matter of throwing the ball over the plate, throwing strikes. You know, not falling into obvious fastball situations, two and oh, three and one. I mean that's that goes to, without saying with every pitcher, but with his stuff, he doesn't have to be very fine on the corners. And it's nice to have guys, uh, at least a few guys that can find the bullpen and get away with a little bit of the plate. That's such a nice free and easy delivery. Doesn't look like he's throwing as hard as he is. Fun to watch power out of the bullpen. The Brewers have been able to put some power pitchers in that pen. A lazy fly ball, and that ball is caught by Eckstein. What a play that was. Boy, David Eckstein robbing a hit from McGee, ranging deep into center field to make that catch. I'm not sure where Denorfia was. He was playing relatively deep. He got a late break on it, but Eckstein able to pick it just before it hits the grass. That's a heck of a play by the second baseman. Rusty just had come off the disabled list and made that one look easy. That was a nice play. Well, the center fielder's got to get that baseball, doesn't he? Where was he? Long time. Yeah. What's a better play, Rock? The Eckstein play or the Ryan Braun diving catch? I'll take Ryan's. Since I'm a Brewers announcer. Good call. Just testing you. <laughs> But that X time play was a dandy. That's tough. I mean, going back like that, looking over your shoulder, running hard. You know, you have the center fielder to deal with. You don't know if he's going to be right on top of you. Both plays very good. Do you have a preference? No, I, I would go with Braun all day. I wouldn't even have to think about it. Being a Brewers announcer. A fine play by Eckstein. Not bad. Lorenzo Kane with one away. Kane making an impact tonight. Had a hit in the third. He reached base on a fielder's choice in the fifth, then stole second and scored the fifth Brewer run. Little bouncer out to Headley. And Kane retired. Two outs in the seventh. And here comes Chris Dickerson, who's had a nice night tonight. Started this game with zero runs batted in this year after spending most of the season on the DL. And has two tonight. Hey, you look to next year and you assume that Lorenzo Kane, if he continues to play the way he has so far this year, got a Pretty good chance to be in that outfield next year. That's a that's a lot of speed in that starting lineup. All three of your outfielders can run. You've got Escobar, Ricky Weeks can run. The element of the stolen base and taking the extra base. Nice to have. But the Brewers aren't thinking about next year. They'd like to get back to 500. And Milwaukee's six under 500 to start the day. You want to have a winning season. Hey, win today, you're at five, and you just keep chugging along. You win series, and you know when you get to five or six games below 500, you start winning series. That's when you can start getting yourself back to 500. And the Brewers were as low as 12 games under 500 this year. And that's when you got to put together some winning streaks. Dickerson in the right center field. That ball's got some carry to it, and it's going to bounce off the wall and up and out of here. That'll be a ground rule double for Dickerson. What a night he's having tonight. Two hits, two RBIs, and he extends the inning here in the seventh. His best night as a Brewer. Yeah. Well, able to center on a high fastball. They tried to get it up in the zone. I don't ever like that pitch. Try for a guy that relies on keeping the ball down in the zone, Frieri is a guy that likes to sink the fastball. You try and have him elevate, he makes a mistake, and Dickerson able to make the most of it. And 
one hop it over the wall. Well, let's see what they do with Luke Croy this time. Did they learn their lesson? Yeah, the last time up, Luke Croy was batting with two outs and a base open at first, and they pitched to him. And he delivered an RBI single that added to the Brewers' lead. Looks like they're going to pitch to him again. No, that's because you've got Joe England on deck. A little different situation in the fifth than it is now. And the reason it's different is because there was a left hander out on the mound at the time. You had nothing but really left handers on the bench. This time a right hander. They're fresh out of lefties. And nothing but left handers on the bench for Ken Mocken. Assuming Corey Hart's not going to get in that bat. Hart's been nursing a tight hamstring. And I doubt he will with a lead. 6 3 Milwaukee. 0 oh 2 is the count. And LeCroy stays alive. Jonathan had an RBI single in the fifth. He walked in the third and grounded out his first time up. Bottom of the seventh. Brewers trying to make it back to back wins against San Diego. And continue to disrupt the pennant race. a basket catch. Inning is over. We head to the eighth inning at Miller Park, and the Brewers lead by three. Dickerson's driven in a pair tonight on two hits. Lucroy on RBI in the fifth inning. And then Bronze Homer gave the Brewers their sixth run. The story out of the bullpen on the mound, Mike McClendon. Three scoreless. He got out of a mess in the fourth inning. And a great defensive play, one of the best of the year from Ryan Braun. Are using his game summary. It catches you up. We're headed to the eighth inning at Miller Park. It's 6-3 Milwaukee. Not two rough starts for the Brewers in this series, but the long relievers 
six and two thirds scoreless able to. Keep the opponent the Padres off the board and allow the Brewers to come back and it's Cameron Lowe's turn now talking about. Having a nice season for Milwaukee did not start the year with the Brewers 36 appearances. With this one tonight at 272 earned run average. McClendon is the pitcher of record for the win that the Brewers can finish it off here tonight. Nick Hundley is batting for the first time. Came in the game defensively for Tori Alba. You figure Hundley will catch tomorrow. Tori Alba took a couple of shots to the mask earlier tonight. Well, we are inching our way towards a possible Trevor Hoffman save opportunity. It's a save situation right now. The question is, does Ken Maka use Hoffman in a safe situation tonight, or does he go with Axford? Did you ask him today? You know, uh, I didn't ask him today. I asked him yesterday, and I figured uh, we'd get the same response. That's Trevor down there getting loose. And what did he say yesterday? He said, I'll let you know. I don't know. I haven't talked to him yet. <laughs> Had to see how the game's going. Both Axford and Hoffman are stretching in the bullpen, it's like dueling banjos. Well, because of that uncertainty, Cameron Lowe has been pressed into the uh, setup man duties. You got two closers out there. Which one are you going to use? One backs up the other. Here's my question to you, Mr. Analyst. Even though Maka doesn't tell us what the plan is, does he tell? The co closers, what his plan is, what scenarios he'll use Hoffman and the scenarios he'll use actually. No, no. So, Ken Mock, both wondering. Ken Mock is an old school guy. I mean, not just with his pitchers, but his position players. You come to the ballpark, you'd be ready when I call on you. It's kind of the way he operates. That's the way he was back in the old days. <laughs> no explanation needed, you're saying. Be ready to pitch. Both of you. Well, Hundley at the plate for the first time. He was thought to be the everyday catcher of the future. For the Padres, but Yorvi Torrealba played so well that uh, he ended up in that everyday role. Torrealba is a guy you like to have in a pennant race, too. He's been clutch. Shattered bat and an out. Cameron Lowe gets the first out of the eighth. Yeah, got that. Sinking fastball in on his hands and down on the trademark and an easy out to Alcides Escobar. Now throwing strikes on a 3 2 count. You don't want to be walking batters to lead off an inning with a three run lead. Here's Denorfia. He drove in two runs in the fourth inning. He knocked Narvison out of the game in that fourth. Hard to figure on Chris Narvison tonight. He was cruising along three scoreless. And then could not get it out in the fourth. He gave up four consecutive base runners. And that was that. As Denorfia singles to left, his second hit. What all happened after that long at bat that he had against Kevin Correa? Not sure if he uh, did something in that at bat or not, but hey, waste management and the Brewers are asking. That you recycle at Miller Park. Be on the lookout for waste management recycling containers inside and outside the ballpark this year. Think green, think waste management. Here's Matt Stairs pinch hitting in the pitcher spot. He slimmed down Matt Stairs.
Lucroy able to knock it down, keep it from the screen, but DeNorphy advances. Anyway. Ed Rapuano kept it from the screen. <laughs> oh, it was the umpire then. Umpire. Everybody's uh, susceptible tonight. Jonathan <laughs> whiffed on it and got Rapuano in the arm. <laughs> And Lucroy given uh, his home plate umpire a little chance to recover here. And he's kind of trouble. You figure in this inning it's going to be Axford. So that very well might answer the question as to who may be closing tonight. I don't know. When Axford was doing the closing, it was Trevor Hoffman in the eighth. At least that's the way it was in the last month or so. John Axford up in the eighth inning, maybe Trevor for the ninth. Axford's last save was a five out save in St. Louis. With an inning at two thirds. So low against stairs here with a runner at second now. One ball, no strikes on stairs. Speaking of clutch bats for a postseason run, stairs. Remember that home run he hit against Jonathan Broxton a couple of years ago. Dodgers beat the Phillies. Or the Phillies beat the Dodgers, I should say. Yeah, he can hit some homers. I'm not looking for much of an average from him, but uh, you know, a veteran guy that comes off the bench has some popping at bat. In the air to right. Backing up is Dickerson and it is gone. Matt Stairs golfs one out of here and it's a brand new ball game. A two run homer and it's six to five Milwaukee as Stairs delivers a big pinch hit home run. Only his third of the year. Well he likes the ball down the zone and that's ordinarily where Cameron Lowe's fastball ends up with that sink on it. And able to golf it out of here. Yeah, a lot easier to hit home runs here at Miller Park than it is at Petco Park. That's a can of corn in San Diego. Got under it, but got enough of it to get out of here. So a two run homer, and the Padres back at the door, 6 5 now. And Ken Maka after a pitch is delivered or was it? Not sure. Ed Rapuano is talking to Maka. I think Maka wanted to make the change before the at bat. <laughs> he was uh, walking out of the dugout when the Cameron Lowe threw that baseball. It's going to count. It is a one and zero count that John Axford is going to inherit. So Mock is going to make the change here. Low is out. Two runs are in on the two run homer by former Brewer Matt Stairs. And here comes John Axford. Got a double switch. We'll set it all up and we continue.
two run home run to change the complexion of this game. Stairs a two run shot off Cameron low and with that home run. He is first on the list the most career pinch hit home runs. He passed Cliff Johnson. That was his 21st pinch hit home run of his career. Johnson with 20. So Matt Stairs. Major League record here in Milwaukee tonight. Not a bad night's work. You see three pitches, hit a home run, and you get your warm up jacket back on. So John Axford is in. And he will inherit a 1 0 count on Will Venable, Axford's 38th appearance of the season. And a save situation at this moment. Axford last pitched against the Cardinals on that. That Wednesday day game and did not get very good defense behind him and Trevor Hoffman had to come in and finish it up. And Joe Winkler out in right field. Which answers a question about Corey Hart's availability. Jonathan Lucro just saved Ed Rapuano from some damage. And so, so they're even. <laughs> that was something. That was not headed for a good spot. And Axford is behind 3 and 0. It's Axford's batter regardless here with a 1 0 count. And Trevor sits back down. Over to third, it's past McGee, a base hit. And Will Venable comes up with a single. Padres have three consecutive hits now. Well, did a nice job getting on top of it and lining it right at Casey McGee. That's a reaction play for your third baseman. And very difficult to react that quickly, particularly with a left handed hitter up. You don't expect it. And Venable hit that one right on the nose. Padres putting up a fight here in the eighth. Two runs are in on the stairs homer, and now the tying run is aboard. David Eckstein will bat. Just one out. Top of the order for San Diego. Eckstein in his first game back from the disabled list, a calf strain. He is 0 for 3 at the plate tonight with a walk. Tejada will hit next, then Gonzalez. They don't want to have to deal with that guy with men on base. The Brewers probably with, without another left hander. Chris Capuani, you would figure, is uh, not available tonight. Fastball from Axford. One and two the count on next time. And we'll see if the Padres put some action on here with the runner at first. Venable has good speed at first base. And Eckstein's a good contact hitter. Yeah, he hardly ever strikes out. And uses right field very well. Eckstein didn't chase. Two balls and two strikes. Venable has 23 steals this year. He's only been caught four times. Be surprised if he doesn't run here. It was 6 3 Milwaukee when the inning started, but Matt Stairs, a two run home run to bring the Padres within a run.
three balls two strikes. One thing you'd say for Axford, he's missing, but he's missing down in the strike zone. He's bounced a number of fastballs. The pitches that he's bouncing in front of home plate are fastballs, not breaking pitches. That's unusual. Runner goes, swing and a miss, throw to second, and it's oh, not in time. Venable steals the bag. Looked like the throw was there. Somehow Venable got to the base. Well, you got to say one thing about Ron Colbert. He's right on top of it. He was right there. Perfect position to make the call both times. And both stolen bases have been very, very close. Could have been an inning ending. Strike him out, throw him out, double play. But on regular speed, he looked out. Let's see. Yep, he's safe. Good call. Got the hand in there. Got it right. But very close. <laughs> Jonathan wanted the call. Mm. Can't throw it any better than that. Now Tejada will bat. Tying run in scoring position. And that one's in the left. Braun giving chase. And it is going to be in the seats. Well, David Eckstein on a strikeout. You don't see many of those. That's a guy that you can almost guarantee to put the ball in play. A testament to Axford's stuff. Perhaps has something to do with Eckstein just coming back. In 308 plate appearances before tonight, 15 punch outs. And only 16 walks. Say how to win. Unable to check his swing, and it's 0-2 on Miguel Tejada. Well, good job by Luke Croy to keep it in front of him and keep Will Venerable at second base. That's the tying run at second. Adrian Gonzalez in the on-deck circle. Big pitch coming for Axford with two away in the eighth. Lays off a breaking ball that time. It's a ball and two strikes. He's got a good lead at second. Tejada, a little half swing. He goes. Tejada strikes out. Rapuano rings him up. The inning is over as John Axford strikes out Eckstein and Tejada. And the Brewers still with the lead.
And this one up. It is 6-5 Milwaukee. Brewers lead by a run. We go to the home eighth. And it'll be the top of the order against former Brewer Mike Adams. You see a, the, the trend here in this game. A lot of former Brewers for the Padres. A yeah, hard throw with a very good slider. Adams has spent some time on the disabled list. But having a tremendous year once again. He had a good year last year. 51st appearance for Adams. And a 185 ERA. More strikeouts than innings pitched. He is the third former Brewer to appear in this game. A big crowd tonight, 40,000 on hand. 40,056 to see this one. Joe Englet will lead off. He came in on the double switch. Yeah, we're keeping a close eye on that bullpen. So far, Trevor Hoffman still sitting down. It looks like at this point, it is Axford's game to finish. And Maka will ask John Axford to give him another one plus inning save. I think that Ken Maka likes to match up with the power fastball of Axford against Adrian Gonzalez. Well, the Padres will have Adrian Gonzalez, Ryan Ludwig, and Chase Headley. Three, four, and five in their batting order due up in the ninth. And at this point, down a run. And perhaps Ken Maka thinking that it's tougher to hit a home run against John Axford than it is against Trevor Hoffman. And a home run ties it up at this point. That's why, you know, Ken Maka doesn't want to really be backed into a corner and say who he's going to use in a given time because you just don't know what the situation is going to be. Well, Mike Adams has been a big part of this Padres bullpen. He's a part of the group of three pitchers at the end of games, usually in a winning scenario that has been among the best in all of baseball this year. Luke Gregerson, Mike Adams, and Heath Bell. They've been shortening games all season. Adams just couldn't get healthy as a brewer. Nothing wrong with his right arm now, though. Just missed. Three and two to England. And he's got that mid 90s fastball and that nasty slider. It's a good pitch. That's why he's had some arm problems in the past. Just misses the inside corner. England out to second. Eckstein makes a catch for out number one. Mike Adams had shoulder surgery last season in April. Missed two months of the season last year. And it was a, a series of injuries with the Brewers. Brewers signed him as a free agent out of Texas A&M Kingsville. Let go by the Brewers. The Padres snatched him up in 08, and now he is. A big part of this Padre bullpen late in games. Yeah, he had knee surgery. He's had arm problems, and uh, you're right. I mean, it's just a matter of Adams being able to stay out on the mound, and uh, his stuff just speaks for itself. Padres boast the best bullpen in the National League. Padres and the Braves have been the two best bullpens in the league this season. And no coincidence, they're at the top of the standings. The 
Cardinals have beaten the Giants tonight. Carpenter beat Lincecum. Lincecum struggles continue. Gave up four runs tonight. 5 1 St. Louis win. Carpenter is now 14 and 4. Randy Wynn homered for the Cardinals tonight. Some unexpected offense. A rare at bat for Randy Wynn. So the Padres, who started tonight's play with a five game lead over the Giants, cannot lose ground. They can add to it. Three two to weeks. Mike Adams has given up just one home run all season. In 50 games. I didn't give up many hits either. Thirty one hits in forty eight and two thirds innings. And he walks Ricky Weeks. You are considered to be very good when you allow just as many hits as innings pitch. That's considered to be very good. That's a benchmark. But he is way under that. Now a base runner with one away and here comes Escobar. Adams is a guy you can run on a little bit if you so choose. Weeks with good speed at first. He's a base stealer. He just doesn't get many opportunities to run. Hitting leadoff in this batting order with guys like Hart and Braun and Fielder behind him. It's pretty much station to station in that leadoff spot. Yeah, a little bit different here, though. One out, you'd like to be able to get to second base. You have more of a singles hitter at the plate right now. And you're right, Adams takes a little bit a little bit of time to get rid of the baseball. Escobar doubled and scored in the first inning. He's been on twice. He scored twice. He's one for three. Hitting second for Corey Hart, who is out of the lineup with tightness in his hamstring. Adams doing all he can to keep Ricky Weeks at first base. Escobar into left center on the run is Venable. He's got it for the out. Weeks has to retreat. Two outs in the inning. Yeah, squared up nicely on that one. I think Mike Adams worried more about Ricky Weeks than he was against Escobar. Made a mistake and Escobar hit it very hard, but not a home run hitter. Now two gone. Here comes Braun. Brian Homer his last time up. He hit a rocket in the left center field his last at bat. And his first home run since July 24th. It had been almost a month. 17 homers 70 RBIs now for Braun. Outfield very deep is going to be tough for Ricky to score if the ball stays in the ballpark. I don't see Ricky running in this situation. They're deep and straight away. It's 
Seven for 11 in steals this year, Ricky Weeks. I think in a different kind of lineup, Weeks could be a 20, 30 stolen base. Different year kind of player. Yeah, different kind of lineup, maybe in a different spot in the batting order. Unusual that you don't want your leadoff hitter to run much <laughs> when you've got Corey Hart, Growing Fielder, McGee, all that can hit the ball to the ballpark. Now, there aren't many leadoff hitters who are asked to hit home runs and not steal. No balls and a strike to Braun. Another throw to first. Boy, Adams. Bringing this game to a grinding halt. Making sure he pays close attention to Ricky Weeks. Well, now Braun is hoping for a mistake. With so much thought on Weeks at first. Pitch out. Nothing doing. I don't get pitching out if you've thrown over as many times as they have. I mean, you, you don't want to throw over before you call a pitch out. That makes no sense. Sometimes a manager will defend the game based on how he manages a game. You know, Bud Black, he's got a running team. He's thinking to himself, you know, this is my team. I'm running here. He thinks everybody's going to run. So he's pitching out. Oh, Weeks, close play. He thought about making a break, and he slipped. Just got back. I don't even think he was going to try and steal a base. An itchy trigger finger for Ricky Weeks. He didn't look like he was going to run, but he just did get back. He kind of lost his footing there just enough. Braun, who's been patiently waiting at the plate, fouls it away. Take you back to the sixth inning. Ryan Braun got a fastball from Frieri and did not miss it. To the back of the bullpen. And the time gave the Brewers a 6 to 3 lead. 17th homer for Braun. The Brewers have needed every one of those runs here tonight. Ball and two strikes now to Ryan. There goes Weeks. And Braun fouls it away. Had a good jump. I think after Ricky almost slipped and just barely got back, I, I, th I think Adams thought there's no chance he's going to go now. But second pitch, he takes off. Not a bad idea to maybe run with two strikes. Well, now you wonder if the emphasis changes for Adams with two outs and two strikes on Braun. Does he continue to pay attention to Weeks? Well, there's your answer. I've got seven throws to first base, my unofficial count during this at bat. I believe you, I haven't been counting. Week stays put, Braun takes one down and away. That would have been a good pitch to run off. Mike Adams has me paying attention to Ricky Weeks. I know that. <laughs> That's what he wants you to do. I'm staring right at him. He wants everybody to know that. You know what? I'm keeping an eye on you over there. <laughs> it's working. Three and two the count to Braun with Fielder coming up next. Yeah, but sometimes a pitcher will worry too much about the runner and not enough about the hitter. And now they're going to play behind Ricky on three and two and two outs.
Now Ricky with a head start might be able to screw on a ball in the gap. This is one I don't get. Why not hold him on? Three and two, two outs. Ricky goes. Braun fouls it away. You get a much bigger lead. You actually get a walking lead. And you know, I can see if Prince is up right here and you want to cover a little bit more ground, but if I were the Padres, I'd be holding that runner, keeping them as close as you can keep them. Instead, Gonzalez is deep at first. So Ricky gets an extra couple of steps and a walking start. Here comes another 3 2 to Braun. And he fouls another one away. This is the kind of at bat that Braun, when he's going well, when he's right at the plate, you see a lot of. Yep, we'll ring one in the gap after all this. He wears a pitcher down. You think about all the, not just the pitches to the plate, but the throws to first. But Blackie, former big league pitcher, knows all about it. Braun's tough to put away when he's right at the plate. But he does major damage with two strikes. Something Ted Simmons knows all too well. There goes Weeks, and Braun lifts one in the air. Gonzalez gives it a look. That's in the seats. He just keeps hanging that slider up in the zone, and Braun had a pretty good pitch to hit. He got upset with himself that he didn't. Break that one down the right field line. It's been a nine pitch at bat for Braun against Adams. Fans trying to help him out. Walked him. Running at bat by Ryan Braun. That's going to get fielded to the plate now. And a one run lead. Prince Fielder will bat with two outs. Yep, just kept throwing one slider after another once he got to the two and two. And Ryan able to fight off some pretty good pitches. He did miss a couple hittable pitches, but able to take the three two fastball and get the walk. That's a nice hit back. Good concentration. Now two on for Fielder. Two away in the inning. And a strike to Prince. See how the Padres defend Fielder. Even with a runner at second base, they put three infielders on the right side. And he got Headley close enough to third base to keep Ricky at second. And it's 0 and 2 on fielder. Fielder and Adams were teammates in the Brewers organization back in 05, back in Nashville. They know each other well. Quickly 0 and 2 on Prince. They got him. Fielder strikes out. Strands a pair. And we are headed to the ninth. Adrian Gonzalez leads off the meat of the order coming up.
six five Milwaukee they lead the Padres as we move to the ninth inning now. And John Axford back on the mound. He struck out the final two hitters of the eighth. He got Eckstein and Tejada. With the tying run in scoring position. Now he'll deal with Adrian Gonzalez. Then Ryan Ludwig and then Chase Headley. Dangerous part of this Padre batting order. And Axford for the second time in a week. Going after a inning plus save. He got five outs in St. Louis on Tuesday. Quickly 0 2 on Gonzalez. And this is why Ken Maka doesn't like to really show his hand as to who he's going to use. I think in this situation with Gonzalez and Ludwig, he likes the power on the mound as opposed to the finesse with Trevor Hoffman. It's all about the matchups as to who he prefer to use. 0 oh 2 the count on Gonzalez. And a swing and a miss. Down he goes. Axford with a fastball. Gonzalez chases. And he has three consecutive strikeouts now, the first out of the night. Well, it's all fastballs, and, you know, Axford is throwing about 93 miles an hour with these fastballs. One on the outside corner, another one on the outside corner, and he elevates one, and Gonzalez goes down for the third time tonight. That's another rarity. Adrian Gonzalez. Is one for five. Three strikeouts. Now Ludwig. Axford has 18 saves this year. Six of those 18 have come with one inning plus. He is six for six in opportunities where he's been asked to go more than an inning. That's impressive. Only Brian Wilson of the Giants has more one plus inning saves. He has seven. Axford could join him here tonight. Yeah, and not too many. You can go to the well and ask him to do that very often, but Axford seems to be able to hold up pretty well. Has two outs to go. A dangerous hitter at the plate. A home run threat in Ludwig. Brewers lead by a run in the ninth. They had a good cut. And it's two and one on Ludwig. Yeah, he had his pitch right there. Did Ryan Ludwig a 95 mile an hour fastball down the middle and mid thigh high? That was his pitch and fouled it straight back. Strike on the corner, another fastball, well located as well, and it's two and two on Ludwig. Painting with the thin brushes to Gonzalez and now Ludwig. How about that pitch? Right on the corner, and he got the call. Outside corner fastballs against Gonzalez, set up the strikeout for Axford. Now he has Ludwig in a two-two count. And a fastball swing and a miss. Ludwig is down on strikes. John Axford bringing the heat to the big power bat to the Padres. Yep, and doing exactly what he has to do. Two strike fastballs up. 95 miles an hour at the letters. And no way you get to that pitch. Ludwig away behind it. Right by him. Yeah. With plenty of hair on it. And now Axford is an out away. Here's Chase Headley. Strike. Same routine. Outside corner fastball to start the count. Headley homered as a left handed batter here yesterday. A two run homer in the first inning against Gallardo. In the air to left. Playable. Ryan Braun will make the catch and the ball game is over. The Brewers win a thriller tonight against the Padres. And John Axford gets the final five outs, his 19th save of the season. Impressive tonight. Well, I'll tell you, the bullpen doing a nice job. Cameron Lowe did give up a couple of runs, but you can't say enough about the, what the bullpen has done the last couple of nights. And good hitting, good offense by the Brewers.
Well, that'll do it for us from Miller Park tonight. The final score, 6-5 Milwaukee. Brewers baseball returns to Fox Sports Wisconsin tomorrow starting at 12.30 with the pregame show. The Brewers return to WMLW next Saturday as they take on the Pirates starting at 6 o'clock. Coming up next on MLW, it's the final out. The Brewers postgame show. For Bill Schroeder, I'm Brian Anderson. Thanks for watching. Have a great night. It's a winner tonight.